So for anyone joining us, we are doing a re-pre-highlight on a great unclean one that you can see on the rest of our posts we're working on this morning, just as kind of a, a demonstration of, of the speed that you can paint a model at like this, using techniques like this. And we're going for a very, by the time this is finished, it may not get now because it's quite desaturated, but we're going for a really, really bright, um, kind of aggressively contrasting scheme. So areas like here, um, we, we've painted through three or four colors anyway. Now we're going in with a white. We've already done this in earlier stages, but we really, really want to make sure it, it pushes through. And we are, we're picking these areas out at the top of this thigh, anywhere upwards facing on the model, kind of zenithal airbrushing style or global, global highlight style. And we're giving them a special bit of attention here to this chest. It's a perfect example. Can go in still with with not too light a dry brush. We really, really want them to be very, very bright. A light touch, but we've not got a, a tiny amount of paint on the brush. There's a, an all right amount of paint on it. So it's a re-highlight of the colours. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And this will boost any colours that are then laid on top of what's done Yeah, this, this is a re-pre-highlight. So the, <laughs> the highlights you put down before the colours go down that are there to just... Um, flavor those colors a bit more we're uh, we're doing that um, some areas as well like this foot I mean it's not it's, it is upwards facing but we don't want it too bright but we can pick out all these little details so like those toenails the boils and stuff using a nice big large soft brush and any areas that are sticking out particularly are going to get this have to make sure that all of these get covered we don't want actual white on the final model but still, it's a great way to make sure that any areas we put down with very light dry brushing, even um, with quite uh, quite transparent colours, like if we're adding fluorescent paints in there, which we are going to be, these will really, really pick it up very, very, very nicely. Yeah. So Nick's asking about doing glazes and bits and bobs. I think that's more along the final stage once once you've got a lot uh, of work. Yeah. Done. I mean, we're trying to do everything with dry brushing here. We are going to be dry brushing in a glazing style. Um, I'm going to grab a wall. Uh, where is the the green wall has gone? It has disappeared. Oh, <laughs> we can show that for the minute. I can show you this one. So this has been painted in that same style, just for dry brushing, and it looks kind of glazed. Um, James has hidden all my best painting somewhere. Yeah, I'm not too sure where the wall is. <laughs> we'll find it and put it on there and cut um, it in a second. Yeah, the super bright wall um, that we've been showing around on our on the rest of our stuff. Oh, I'll find that. All right, James is finding the thing that he's hidden. Um, anyone has a uh, moistening pad? Da, 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 da. Uh, Scaraman, yes, the moistening pad really does help quite a lot. All right, James has found the wall. It was hiding behind our paints. So this is the type of, of, of glazing effect we can get. That is 100% dry brushed. And we can see the, um, we can see the kind of the pre-highlighting in effect here. Uh, da, da, da. It's um, oh god, questions are coming fast, so I'm missing them. There was something about uh, getting an airbrush finish. Um, yeah, it's very similar to an airbrush finish. What you can achieve with it. So, uh, does the moistening pad help to avoid a very dry, spotted look and give it, it more does. smooth? Yeah. So 100%. the the, the scaraman, the combination of the the, the damping pad, as you can see here, um, what it does, is it just gives you a much smoother, smoother blend. Uh, and we're not we're not wetting uh, the, the brushes, like soaking them with water or anything like that. It's a very, very subtle moisture that's applied to the surface to give a lovely, smooth finish. Right, yeah, I'll pick up another model here and show you how subtle we're going. So having only a small amount on, it allows you to just about pick out edges and stuff like that. And you can slowly build up texture bit by bit and you get a very, very soft effect. Also, if you're stippling, you can see it there. It's you can see how subtle that is bit just by, by using bit. it. You'd be powdering on a very, very gentle effect and that's how you end up with stuff like this yeah and that that is a hundred percent done with the d although these little spots here where i exploded magenta on it because i'm an idiot <laughs> <laughs> yeah so we're obviously working on this great unclean one 
Uh, you can see at the That's stage that we're actually. up to. Yeah, it is being done all by the timer, just so you can see how quick uh, you know the work can be done. Uh, so if you are following us on Instagram, you can keep up to date with all of the updates. We'll stay live for a bit, just so you can see the next stages. Yeah, yeah. Feel free to ask questions. Apologies for anyone who saw us yesterday, where the audio was not great on our live. We're going to look to address that. Yeah. Hopefully, you can hear us now. Here's some more. Uh, so this is kind of showing the um, the top down dry brushing effect you can get this is 100% dry brushed again and you're just kind of looking for the unique thing you can get here like this this looks kind of like it's been airbrushed a bit in that it gets uh, darker here and lighter here but what you cannot get with an airbrush is this this picking up textures this is the magic bit so you can you can actually get more with a dry brush I mean you can use them both you can marry the techniques up it's a beautiful way to work but you can get more with a dry brush that you can't get with anything else because nothing else paints on actual physical texture paints on angles and volumes but it won't pick out the raised bits for you in the same way that this does no exactly um so a couple of questions a couple of bits and bobs glad you like series s and uh, yeah thank you for for uh, pledging and for backing series d really appreciate it jump jump die <laughs> <laughs> um the uh, yeah it's very very clean for a dry brush it's the, it's the combination of using uh the the, the the redesigned brushes the texture palette and also the uh the dampening pad it's as well cleaner than this as well this um this white is actually it's i mean we're, we're not trying to do anything clumsily but this white's all getting covered over so we don't have to be overly delicate about it like if you're going super smooth and you are doing your final finish uh like this then gently gently but yeah this stuff we're all covering over so the final stages will be super super careful um and precise with but this white it's just it's a nice model that's helping but we're also using a big brush and we don't have too much paint on the brush so anywhere we go over we're picking out in, uh, in a nice soft manner and our bristles do not feel dry and parched also no. getting a lot of questions about cleaning if you're using it right and you're using your pad as you can see, that, that that brush has used a lot of different colours and, and it's pretty much clean as well. And that's a combination of using the... So it's actually uh, pretty much clean in the middle there. Yeah. Um, so you end up with a bit more around the edges because that's not where you're, you're dry brushing. Um, but the brush is cleaning itself. So by the time you get to your final brightest colours, you've removed um, most of the paint that's gone on. And that's, that's the beauty of like dry brushing and cleaning your dry brush of pretty much the same technique. It's just rubbing it on somewhere and removing it. Moving yeah. it with texture. Any so, other questions? Yeah, Bob, Bob's asking about how important is the texture palette. Um, it's uh, how important it is to the process. Yeah. And you can see this, this is a bit of A4 plastic card that Byron's been using for the last decade. I don't know, decade. <laughs> um, so you can see the amount of paint that's on there. Let me show you. Um, okay, so I'm going to moisten my brush. Uh, I'm trying to keep everything on camera here. Uh, moisten my brush here. Um, it should be no more than slightly damp to the touch take some paint off my palette i'm trying to not be right-handed it's difficult for me james will try and get in there yeah I'm trying so i to. always drag the paint off in one direction and then if i go here this is what the texture palette is for so that is exactly how my i, I can twist it around make sure there's no there's no splodges on there but that is exactly how my paint is going to leave my brush on the model because that is a painted textured surface so when i go to the model he's looking mighty fine on camera possibly better than he is in real life um then the brush is going to have paint exiting it in exactly the same way that I'm expecting. I'm not getting any nasty surprises here. Um, this also, it is not, it's not porous. It's been effectively primed and painted exactly the same as this surface. You should not be removing paint on a paper towel because you're going to get caking or clumping or all the other negative words associated with having um, dry granules of paint on your brush. And those dry granules... They don't want to leave the brush very much, but when they do, they leave it on the model, and then you end up with chalky-looking dry brushing. Yeah, I mean, um, Edo, you've asked regarding, obviously, the difference between makeup brushes and uh, Series D. Uh, first and foremost, there's, there's about four or five years' worth of development behind Series D. Byron, uh, you know, spent a lot of time working on different uh, different sort of head shapes. The shape's uh, the, similar. The, yeah, the shape, the shape is probably the most similar thing that you that you probably notice. Sorry, cracking my knuckles. Um, um, and, um, uh, but other than that, I think, the, you know, the, 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 he, the hair which we use is obviously yeah, very important different it's non-synthetic um it degrades beautifully and it degrades down let me pick up an old 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 brush actually so literally these are like these are prototypes we're about to show you now these are prototypes so this is uh this is not an xl but you can see this kind of beautiful there we go this beautiful dome shape that's because it's worn down it's worn in and this has had heavy use this brush it's been used with black it's been used with um deep 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 saturated colors like your hold your blue that we're a, a big fan of here 
um, and it's going to wear down. And then the the fill is also extremely dense. You don't have that in. Yeah, makeup brushes don't have such a dense they don't, fill. They with don't them. need to. The, no. the density of bristles um, for putting paint on. Um, what that means is, when you dry brush, you're working away from the outside in, and you're always working your way to the area where there are the most bristles. And so your brush is reinforcing itself with its its hundreds of hairs. Um, so that makes a really big difference there. Also, the length and the width. Uh, yeah. We've played with those proportions quite a lot. The, the, that yeah. flex is the right amount. The only thing that's proportionately similar is the is the overall look of it. But other than that, everything, so every, well. yeah, and I suppose the handles. But everything else is you know comparatively different. Uh, Scarin, you're asking obviously about um, uh, Series D. How long's left on the Kickstarter? There's 18 days left on the Kickstarter. So if you do want to back, uh, you have 18 days, and there's loads of extras and bits and bobs that are going to be coming over the next 18 days as well. Yeah, we um, spoil some of those at some point. Yeah, we will try not to. <laughs> um, re- really glad that you're happy with. Uh, Series S as well. Thanks for letting us know. Uh, let's see if there's 18 days left. Yeah. Um, right. So what you're just doing a bit more of the highlighting at the moment, aren't you? Oh yeah, just kind of going over like, the model. I can uh, I can jump up to the next stage. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, fine. Yeah, we'll do just it. do it. Yeah. Um, right. Timer on. Serious business. So I've actually forgotten what colours we use for this. I'm gonna grab a. Right. We we want this stuff to stand out. So we're gonna go for the big boys. Fluoro green. Spring green. Spring green, yeah, spring green's good. All right, so I do appreciate that. Um, We're trying to work on quite a small space here and get it in the camera, guys. So if I look a little bit. Little I'll do my awkward. best to use my uh, my camera skills. Uh, jump, jump, die. What hair we're we using? That is a secret. We, uh, you know, probably spent four years uh, or five years developing them, so we are keeping that a bit hush, uh, just because uh, it's taken that long to get the, the the hair working correctly, the wear of the heads to, it's to not be. Unicorn head, no, have yeah, we, we we normally tell people unicorn, but um, but no, we're not un- we're not unveiling that, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. It's nice hair. Any chance of a bundle with the M and S together? We have something in the works. Uh, we have, yeah, yeah, we've got something that kind of uh, leans a little bit towards that. Yeah, but um, we've not been asked that yet. No, we haven't. But it's something we, you know, we will think about um, and we'll possibly do. But there is something that does involve all three ranges uh, that you will be able to oh God, that's get. Right. <laughs> yeah, right, guys, um, you're getting live. Yeah, pornographic. So this is when I was saying about the um, how smooth the stages are. This this one we are now trying to be quite gentle with so i'm holding my brush further back down the handle so if you hold your brush here when you use it there is no flex there is none and it, it gives you a more aggressive um dry brushing. if you hold it further back you can be a lot softer with a bit it more like japanese painting or something like that um you get nice flowing strokes yeah and, um, i think mr miyagi karate kid exactly <laughs> softly softly <laughs> um Ed, I'm glad you like Hold Your Blue. Yeah, it's one of our favourite colours, uh, but for a lot of things, it's a very, very good colour by scale. We um, started off uh, this lady, actually, I'll bring into camera, who's got a lot of attention. So um, she started from Hold Your Blue in the recesses and worked all the way up, and then it was worked in again. This is all dry brushing. Um, it's kind of been smudged in here um, to give accents to these areas. It's a beautiful colour, works with a lot of other colours. Chef, I don't know if you're still watching the video, but if you are, uh, the cleaning of the brushes is a combination of using the texture palette that you can see on the table uh, and also the dampening pad, which is just this thing over here. Um, I use the texture, the texture palette is used basically as a washboard. Um, so I'll, I'll run it backwards and forwards, a lot like dry brushing uh, with some soap on there. And I'll use a piece of paper towel. The only time I do use paper towel in my painting is in the cleaning. And that's just basically to the moment your paper towel isn't um, isn't showing up any other colours, then um, you know that you've you've got the majority of what could be hidden in your bristles. Our bristles are lightly coloured, so that helps as well. Yeah, so you can know. keep uh, keep obviously seeing how, how the condition of the brushes. Scarman, uh, the key to avoiding the chalky texture is a combination of using uh, obviously Series D and also the dampening pad as moist. well. Yeah. So you're dry brushing. Um, Basically, this is here. So instead of going back to my palette for more paint every time, I'll show you um, because I'm about to need to do exactly what I'm talking about. So paint is still leaving the brush, but it's beginning to leave it less readily than I would like. So what I'm going to do at this stage is rather than going back to my palette, I'm going to go back here. To the dampening pad, yeah. Oh, God. I'm sorry Mm. that I'm not left-handed. It's all right. Okay. um, I'll then put it on the back of my hand to show you. So see that beautiful... It's lovely, subtle, subtle. Blush, like blusher effect. Um, 
that's what we're going for there. And then we're helping pigment exit the brush rather than just plowing more pigment into the bristles, which is naughty. <laughs> that's the only way to explain it. It gets naughty. Yeah. What's in the dampening pad? Well, that's how it works. Well, the dampening it's pad foam. is essentially f some foam, uh, and it's some foam that we, you know, we tried a couple of different foams just to get the right nice one. Nice sterile um, one. But it's, um, it's a foam that we it use as well. If you get if you get paint on the foam, as you can see, we've got some purple here from yesterday's work. It will not exit it onto your bristles. Yeah. Um, in future uses. Yeah, and the thing is, uh, yeah, another key thing with Series D is obviously the shape. Show you how much water I put in. Yeah, yeah, yeah we'll well. do that. So there is barely any in here, so that much yeah you only need a tiny tiny amount of water we're not when it when when we've you know shown people and, and said to, to people about obviously adding water or moisture to, to dry brushing um involved in the technique that comes with with series d then um then a lot of people kind of said oh god you add water to, to, smears. to the smears and all the worry of that but that as you can see the minimal amount that added to that sponge and then when you go back to the sponge to sort of reactivate what's on the brush once you've uh, done a bit of work with it or, or you know or you've put the dampener on straight away then it, it just works extremely well um, so we're just going up for a smooth, smooth, smooth amount of application at the moment. You get a lovely smooth finish from using it. Your second stage, once you've used the dampening pad, will generally be smoother than the first stage. So what I tend to do is like putting down a block of colour and then blazing, uh, glazing almost. Um, so this is the first stage, it's slightly less subtle than the one that's going to follow. And this puts down the volumes. And then when we go to the next stage, um, once you've used the dampening pad, we'll go over all of this and that kind of works, like I've said, like a glaze, basically. So here we go, back to here. Back to the dampening pad. Remove it on the palette, see how much is going to come off. Uh, there we go, it's coming off very subtly. And then we'll go over all those areas we've touched and we will make them smooth and beautiful. Pads, thanks so, so much. Uh, if you do back, thank you very much. Really appreciate that. And I hope you do like, uh, hope you do like uh, the, the product, the D, when you get it. <laughs> Yeah, Scammon, it's you can use it for that as well. Uh, some of the smaller brushes in the range, obviously this is, uh, I can't remember what size, this is uh, just one of the prototypes we've got, but uh, this, you know, the smaller sizes in the, in the set are brilliant for doing subtle amounts of sort of OSL and things like that on oh, surfaces. Oh, 100%. Um, where's Plague Bearer? There's a few Plague Bearers about, Yeah, actually. we've got a few. So but, here, here's a Plague Bearer that we, we, you know, we've done, and you can see the subtle OSL that's been done on him from the blade uh, on his body. There's a couple more lying around. Here we go. Oh, this this one's go. really good. That one will probably show up with the colour difference. Yeah, that was a bit better. better. Yeah, so you can see the OSL that's been done on that play bearer uh, just by using one of the smaller brushes. That's used, uh, not even the excess, that's just a small. Oh, it's just a small. Okay, yeah. perfect. Yeah, uh, Empress. That's yeah. It's a uh, it's a big model to tackle. So uh, as you can see, I mean, we've been doing this for about an hour or hour or so now. So, so it's um, down being on stream a bit. Yeah. But, um, but as you can see, it's, it's really you know it gives you a lovely, lovely transition of colour and uh, you know. There we go. So that's before the current stage, after the current stage. Yeah, it goes. It goes. You, you have to as you're increasing the brightness. It, it, there's a tidy element that goes to it as well. So you, each stage, you're you're working above the previous colour. Um, you can kind of stipple if you want to, um, and then you're dry brushing down into the previous colour, and that helps you kind of get a fade. It's just the same. Oh, turn the camera these. around. Hang on. This James's forehead, guys. Yeah. <laughs> That's a lovely tummy. J Rain, yeah, you can use these on terrain perfectly. They oh, uh, they are brilliant terrain on terrain. Uh, if beautiful. you haven't seen the walls that uh, that we've done, uh, here's some of the walls it's that have been gorgeous. done. Gorgeous. Um, Top down work, so it gives yeah. that lovely zenithal kind of look on the on the on the terrain as this well. This is fast as well. This yeah. is literally like um, like ten minutes work probably. Yeah. So that's just the wall. And then if you haven't seen it, we showed it already on on the on the on the stream. But if you haven't seen it, then here's a uh, here's one done with some color as well. Uh, so it gives you a really really good idea of what you can achieve with it. And you can see the smoothness that you do get as a result of it. Uh, but no problem, Jay Rain. Hope you like that. And apologies for my forehead again. <laughs> Not something I was expecting to hear. Right no, there. no, I double tapped the screen. I didn't realise that that's how it works. But yeah, <laughs> guys, we're getting to grips with the technology. So, uh, Ultra Minis, you asked a few questions. Um, obviously, there's five years worth of development involved with the brushes uh, for the prototypes, the hair, everything that's been involved with it. Obviously, getting them to work the way that they do. Um, and regard cleaning. Um, 
generally speaking, we've covered it already in the video, but I'll go over it again. The texture palette that you see on the surface of the table and combined with the, 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 the dampening pad, which is that there. We're not saturating our brush no. massively at any point, so that really helps with any kind of cleaning and maintenance. Yeah. Um, also, we're not caking on the brush, so the brush is not getting the kind of the massive volume of paint that maybe people would normally associate with dry brushing on it, which means that it has a much, it's got a much longer life expectancy. There are a lot of bristles in there too, and the more yeah. bristles you have and the finer they are, they're not something coarse, they're not ball hair or similar. Um, they're fine, but there's a lot of them packed in, so they're all backing each other up. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so I know it's definitely not a stretch goal. My forehead does not come as part <laughs> of the campaign. <laughs> uh, yeah, but Ultra Minis, yeah, you can, with, with regards to the damping pads, uh, Byron did it a bit earlier, but essentially, no, you, it's just a couple of drops of water, literally a couple of drops from the end. You can use the end of the brush and just literally just okay. put that in a water pot and then um, and then uh, just dab it on yeah, there. Yeah, so uh, I would just, um, just go to my pot. Literally that one, one is enough. That's yeah. how much you need. And then we add that into there. into the pad, uh, just to wet it a little bit. Uh, yes, the uh, jump down diet. The, it will come as a, we will probably do it as a one off uh, product possibly, but um, but at the moment it's only available uh, in Series D as a set. Uh, that's the only place that it's available. Yeah, and it does give a really, really good uh, glow effect. Ultra Mini, uh, it's a really, really cool way of doing it. And because it's so smooth as well, uh, you know, in the process of the application. And one thing you'll notice as well is that, you know, the, the way that the brush is being, is being used isn't as uh, aggressive or as heavy handed as you might s expect. A lot of the painters which have, you know, have been involved in the testing of it. So Andy, Richard Gray, all the guys at Anker, all the guys that have been involved with, with, uh, with Artist Opus as a business and other previous brush ranges, when they've tried it, um, muscle That's memory, surprised. muscle memory for all of them instinctively, they've worked quite hard or heavy handed with a yeah, brush first and David, foremost David and um, um, Bohan when we had them down they were the first couple to test them and they said there was definitely there's a there's an adjustment period um, before you um, you get used to this, the soft touch that's needed with them as you can see I'm not a lot of paint is coming off beautifully and smoothly but I'm not I'm not going in yeah, it's like not, it's not leather no exactly um, it's it's not heresy. It's a complete new way of dry, dry brushing, giving you a much heresy. better finish. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's a mel I can't read the name, but this guy has asked. It. It's got heresy. Um, as 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 in uh, for resellers or shops, uh, Ultra Minis. Yes, uh, we have uh, a retailer network that was ever growing. Uh, so if you if, if got you, a friendly yeah. local gaming store, please send them to trade at artisopus.com. Artis-opus.com. Um, get them to send us an email and yeah. it would be and a pleasure we'll, for them we'll to be stocking our products. Gladly stock our brushes and products in your shop. So you, Even you, for global domination. Yeah. <laughs> the idea is that you can uh, go to any of your local shops and, uh, and uh, pick up our products. So yeah, if you have any questions and want to know any answers, if you just joined, then feel free to ask. Uh, we just, you know, we've done several posts on our Instagram of the stages so far used on this uh, great and clean one, but we wanted, we, yeah, we wanted to do a, a video for you guys uh, just so you can see it uh, being done, and we'll take some photos and videos in a minute. Um, we'll probably stop the stream and then yeah, take some photos good, and then start again, good, maybe. Couple more minutes. Yeah. yeah. Um, plans to stock stuff in Australia yeah once again uh, if you have a shop local to you and you want them to stock our send products them our send them our way uh, the email address for them to contact us is trade at artist hyphen which is a little floating line opus.com uh, so that's the plan we want we would love to stock our brushes with as many shops that are willing to work with us so yeah so just get onto your local shops and pester them yeah <laughs> Um, so yeah, so we're just putting another, the next highlight colour on, uh, and you can see Brian's focusing on towards the brighter areas, just adding Trying that. leave a little bit of the white that we've got there yeah. um, for the final stuff, but this is looking, it's starting to look pretty funky now. So the, the first stage is, is kind of a gentle stipple, and then dry brush down to the previous layer, so gentle stipple. Dry brush down, gentle stipple. M Budsy painting, uh, very, very, uh, it's totally fine to ask the questions, so don't worry. Um, so, the texture palette that you see in front uh, of uh, on the table, that is used in combination with the dampening pad, which is this just over here. Um, the, the combination of using those uh, allows you to actually clean the brushes as you're working and remove colours. So, so used, this has been used for the entirety of this model, this brush. Yeah, so as you can it's see, doing very, it's, very it's well. been used on every colour that you see on this so the blues, the purples, the whites, everything. Uh, so, it's a combination of using using the dampening pad uh, and this uh, texture palette to be able to clean the brushes as you work. Right in there, that arm is looking... Yeah, lovely, really lovely, lovely. Which is really cool. 
So yeah, if you do have any questions, feel free to ask. Uh, the Kickstarter campaign has 18 days remaining. Uh, so if you haven't backed and are interested in backing them, please feel free to just head over. The link is uh, on our profile in the description at the top. Um, you've got video, various videos on there. We've also got a video on YouTube that shows the process of doing the ATST, which you can see over the back there. Uh, that video, that model is actually in a video on our YouTube channel, minus the pink spotties. Oh, yeah, um, <laughs> I got my denture on it. Yeah, so that's actually on our uh, on our YouTube channel if you want to go and watch that pro that from start to finish. Uh, it's also in one of the updates, I believe, as well as a video, yeah, so you can is. just go and check it on there. Number one. Yeah, number one, who knows. Um, but yeah, so we're going to keep going for a little bit and uh, we, will, you, we will keep seeing updates and posts on our Instagram uh, as this model progresses. Yeah, check back in like, I don't know, 25 minutes, half an hour, something yeah, like that. Yeah, and it will be a lot further on from where it is. That's going to uh, be so bright. Yeah, super, super bright. Um, yeah, any any questions that you have, I'll stay, we'll stay on for a couple more minutes. Any questions you have, feel free to ask. I know there's quite a few of you watching. Uh, so if you do want to ask anything about the Ranger brushes, then feel free to. Um, resisting adding in fluorescent paint but that is the next step yeah the next step is to go to super get, super super bright we need to get a separate video of that yeah so, we'll, do. Um, we'll, we'll jump back on we'll do another what we'll do is we'll stop and we'll take some photos and then uh, and then we'll jump back onto another live video um so that you can see the next couple of stages are there are all the models uh, or photos on the Kickstarter page examples of what can be achieved with this dry brush? Yeah, so we've got we've got you know photos from all different people who, who have been involved with the dry brushes, so you can go and check all those photos on there uh, as well. So they're all so on there. Like this is if you're looking for like high end stuff by me, not by um, Bohan or, by, or, or, Bohan or, or David, David yeah. um, then this is this is what a normal human being who's not God. Can <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're trying to do as much uh, work with the brushes so that all of you. Uh, anyone who's a backer or anyone who's on the fence of, of backing or interested in backing can see kind of exactly what it is you can achieve with uh, with the brushes. Even if it's not completely practical as well, we're trying to do them 100% dry brush. So this model, if I was to pop some glazes on, I think I could make it look nuts. Um, that is 100% dry brushed. Um, we might show some kind of combinations of other techniques um, yeah. later in the campaign because we're, we're not trying to tell people to use dry brushing for everything by no. any means. That's that's not what we're here for. It's, 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 a, a, it's a technique which gives you, you know, a very quick, very and especially with the smoothness that can be achieved, it gives you a very, very quick technique which uh, allows you to create a good foundation for then going in and doing extra works with, for example, Series S or Series M or, whatever, or other brushes. Or airbrushing. Or airbrushes. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, thank you ever so much, Bamboo, for, for backing yesterday. Really, really appreciate it ever so much. Uh, so, thank you. Uh, Bob, the extra small brush, um, we actually ran out of them. We've been using them so I much. Um, I can show you. We, we literally, have, have a, the extra small is the only one that we, I don't think we've got any any of the samples left. Yeah, we've got a very beaten up small that yeah. needs so, to be so this cleaned is a, a little bit. This is a small, is, so there's actually one, the this is actually a one, uh, there's one smaller, small, isn't there? Yeah. That's a medium. Just so you can see. That's a large. That's a large. And there's the extra large, which is the add-on. The, uh, the extra large is the big one. Okay, so yeah. Hope that shows you. But the extra small, you will. We, as soon as we get some more of the um, of the of the prototypes, which shouldn't be too long, uh, we will then be able to show you photos of that. Uh, everything is in production at the minute as well, so we're not going to be having huge delays or anything like that. So you haven't got to worry. It's quite tiny, the extra small. Yeah, um, it's, it's pretty It's going to be what you want to use for getting in there. Maybe doing a non-metallic metal dry brushing on a, on blades and stuff like that. Thank you very much, Bob. Really appreciate that. Thanks for backing. Uh, thank you ever so much. Cool. So we're going to end the video now, guys. And then what we'll do is we'll be back on in a bit once the next couple of stages are done. Uh, so stick around if you're on your lunch at around about sort of 12 o'clock-ish. We'll be back on around about then just so you can see where the model is up to. Catch you guys very soon. See you in a bit. Bye, bye. So we're back, guys. We've done a quick live stream earlier just to see a couple of stages on it, but we are back to have a look at uh, where we're up to on it. Hi, Will. How are you? Well, um, so we're fluoro just stage. doing the fluoro stage. Uh, we're doing the, uh, the the higher stage uh, of highlighting here. It's the least subtle colour, but possibly one of the most subtle applications. Yeah. So again, we thought we'd do another quick live stream just so you guys can ask questions about uh, about Series D and see it being used uh, and the technique which is involved with it. Uh, hey guys, thanks to everyone who's joining. So yeah, so that, let's get in, come in and have a look at where we're at uh, on the model. Uh, so you can see a lot of the highlighting work that's been done through the several stages. If you're looking at all the photos that have been uh, posted on the videos that have been posted on our Instagram, you can see the progression of the model from this morning. Uh, it's just obviously had loads and loads and loads of layers of contrast and highlights are all added to it now. It's come, uh, it's come, I mean, for, it's a big model. We've been talking about this. It's a huge model. He's coming 
quite a long way in a pretty short amount of time. You can have a look at, if you go top down on the palette, James, I'll show people how I mix from like around here. Yeah, yeah, sure. Okay, so I've got our two colours here. So I'm taking dibs just about with the end of the brush. I'm taking them to this area where I've been mixing my colour. Take a little bit more of the fluoro because we're kind of making this crazy lime colour. Moving it, a little bit of moisture from the palette. And there we go. So you can just see what's being done. Hey guys, thanks for joining us again. Really appreciate it. Hello again. Oh god, I've turned the camera around again. Stop it, James. Yeah, keep turning the. Uh, he's um. Oh, he's just. Done it again. He wants a limelight, guys. Yeah, sorry. Uh, Eric, thank you for pledging. Really appreciate it. Uh, I'm glad you like Series S. Uh, but yeah, no, thank you ever so much for the kind words. Really appreciate it a lot. Uh, you have to. You got a cheeky glimpse of my forehead again. Then so there you go. <laughs> uh, X James the Hat X. Thank you so much, dudes. Uh, I hope you do like uh, what you're seeing, which is great. Uh, thank you for everyone joining. Nick, hi, Sergio. Hi to see you. How are you? Scaran, thanks for coming back. Thank you for pledging, Scaran. Really appreciate that. Uh, I'm glad that uh, the videos that we're doing are helping a lot of you to see the benefits and the uses of Series D and the technique that's uh, that's yeah. available. We with don't it. just want to sell you a product. Like if if we're going to do something, we're going to support it fully. So if there's something more you want to see, there's a particular type of model you want to see us working on, um, then please let us know and we'll do our best. It's, it's our job to help explain the use of uh, the different uses of our products. Yeah. So. Brilliant. Bob Bobbington, thank you so much for pledging. Really appreciate it ever so much. Yeah, yeah Nick, yeah. Byron's a bit shy to be on camera. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. Um, we're just uh, we're just um, working through it now. I'm just um, not as beautiful as this big boy. So. Uh, yeah, this model is pretty impeccable. Um, but yeah, if you have any questions, then uh, then feel free to ask. Um, I'm more than happy to answer questions about Series D, uh, about the technique that comes with Series D, the dampening pad, uh, the, the the texture palette that obviously is used. Um, are all the greens done uh, through this technique? That's correct. Everything you've seen, you see on this model. Some of it's been stippling. It, it, it's stippling and dry brushing. But it's, it's a combined use, um, a combined use of, uh, of the brushes. Will, uh, really good question. We've had that asked quite a lot. The beauty of Series D in cleaning it, it's very, very simple because the, br the bristles are so soft uh, in the hair that we've actually you know, because used. We're going back to our dampening pad. Yeah, and we're using it in the dampening pad to essentially uh, use that part of the cleaning process as well. There's very little on this brush. It's not. It's not saturated. No. Um, so it's, it's a, a little bit moist. That's all it is. And you use the texture palette down here to remove. Uh, the problem with paper and using paper with a technique is it does absorb a lot, a lot of paint that's on the brush, and also it dries the bristle it's out. It's a porous surface. It's yeah. Not a good idea. Yeah. So using it's using not the like both a model, it's not a good place to test how things going to behave. The exactly. Back of your yeah. hand is a better place to test how paint's going to behave than a piece of tissue paper. Yeah. That or is cardboard or anything. Like I, that. I I use a tile. When I yeah. dry brush, I prefer it to uh, prefer it to um, to, to paper. Um, but yeah, uh, so th it's a combination. In answer to your question, Will, it's a combination of using the dampening pads and also a texture palette like this one here. Clean it with soap after a heavy session. Yeah, and you're pretty good. Yeah, and that's why that's why all our brushes, as I'm sure a lot of you know, come with brush soap because we want you guys to look after the products as well. Uh, so yeah, Greenkeeper, thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Uh, if you can pick it up, that'd be amazing. So thank you, and I hope you're well, dude. Um, what else? Let's have a look. Who else is asking questions? Uh, that's that one. Uh, if you pledge, how long till the brushes are available? Uh, I'm glad you like this. Uh, yeah, September-ish kind of time. Uh, I'm really glad you like Series S as well. So thanks for for picking that up as well. But uh, yeah, all the waves are listed on uh, the rewards section on the Kickstarter. So go have a look. Uh, there are still some there's still some there. September available, yeah. So yeah, but um, but yeah, he's coming along really nicely. We're just doing more highlighting stages at the moment. Grim painting, hi to see you. Hope you're well. Um, yeah, General Germania. I hope you can check them out. Go on the go on the Kickstarter. There's loads of information on there. Plus, obviously, pictures of models and bits and bobs. There's a video of uh, me painting this model. James will point out now. Yeah. Um, it's linked on the campaign. It's also on our YouTube if people want to see more content. Yeah, if you do go on the YouTube, you can. Uh, that's you heavy can... stippling on a flat area as well, so that's perhaps something that people wouldn't wouldn't normally associate dry brushing with. Yeah, so just so you guys brushes. can see it there. This is uh, excuse the pink dots, but this is uh, <laughs> this is an ATST uh, from Star Wars Legion that uh, was stippled and dry brushed uh, to, to this result. Obviously, following light sourcing as well, which is really nice. Uh, so that's just uh, that's just that. But it's, there is a full video on our YouTube of how to actually use this. 
All right, so we're at a really good stage now of, of kind of the levels of highlight. I'm actually going to add white in. Um, we've been doing this all the way through. I'm adding white for one stage, and then I'm um, I'm going back and I'm covering that white. But we're not going for like we want people's eyes to bleed looking at this. We want it to be so bright. <laughs> So there's been various stages of highlighting work that have been done on it. And obviously all following sort of light sourcing from above. So this one's interesting. Because it's got the, the ridges run down, I'm going left and right, but then I'm also going down. And that's because I want to catch... This is a really good area to show, it, actually. I want to catch these steps. These ridges getting really close. Yeah, there we go. These. But I also want to hit, like, the top of details, like this stuff here. And this all stuff here. Bits, yeah, where the skin's torn and stuff. So we can see just through that that tiny step of me adding white, I actually have desaturated things a little bit here. We've got more contrast, but it's not got the same depth of color, and that's what happens when you use use white for your highlights. James probably knows more about this than me because he's more of a finesse painter. But um, yeah, tell him stuff about that in, in the highlighting. Yeah, so if you if you use white in your highlights instead of using actual colors. yeah, so so I, I'm a massive advocate of boosting colors for highlighting using colors within sort of same branch or arm of color. Uh, white put, putting white into the color wall essentially like bleach. It just it just you know saturates it massively. Not always a bad thing, but no, not for for certain colors. But say for example with greens, I I, I personally prefer to boost with like yellow uh, or a, a brighter or a color really to just add it, add sort of saturation to it. It, rather than sort of adding white, which I find bleaches colours, and it, and it jumps a step too too massively. Whereas if you use a colour like like yellow and green, it, it will boost it to a point whereby you know you're not you, you've got a bit more control of what you're doing essentially. We could use, we could use fluoro yellow here. We could try that. You could, out. yeah, yeah. Should Should we try, try it out? Let's try a bit of fluoro yellow. Okay. Well, I mean, like, let's <laughs> let's step things up. So I'm gonna do this white step. Uh, this is again. This is our third re pre highlight. Um, it may sound over the top, but I mean we're on the clock here, and I've been, I've been talking. I'm not very good at multitasking. We're on an hour and twenty minutes, so like we've done what have we done? Like eight steps, nine steps. In yeah, that time? Right, roughly. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Thank you, Will. Really, really appreciate the kind words, dude. Um, a lot of thought, and both with all our ranges of brushes, be it it's S, M, or D, have all have all had a lot of thought put behind them. Um, Byron and myself, uh, we, we do paint a lot ourselves, so it's not like. A, you know, we make brushes and but don't know, <laughs> don't yeah. know how. We're trying uh, to make stuff that we we want to use and will make our lives better. Like yeah, part exactly. of the reason for coming up with it is that I I literally I had this thought that dry brushing could be more than it was and it there wasn't the technique was more than I was able to get from it at the time using um traditional flat brushes and um traditional hairs and that type of stuff. So I, I just wanted to wanted to unlock more more that I could play with essentially and that's kind of that's what's informed all the decisions as to the the width and length of the hair how soft it is um the length of the bristles uh the chunkiness of the handles everything is informed selfishly by me wanting the best tool for the job um as, as someone who's really into dry brushing so if you do want to know anything about Series D, or if you've, got, you've just joined us and you want to ask questions about the technique that's involved with, with the brush range, uh, the dampening pad, the, the, uh, the use of the, of the texture palette, um, then feel free to ask. More than happy to sort of answer questions for you guys. We're doing a lot of these videos just so that over the next sort of 18 days of the campaign, you can, you know, you can ask questions regarding obviously what's... Uh, what's involved with the with the product um we've got loads of uh, other miniatures and other bits and bobs that are going to be released as add-ons in the campaign uh, there's loads still to come so we please really you know, uh, yeah let's do it yeah no go bright go go bowl we'll go home so um so yeah Flu no. adding fluoro yellow in now um super 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 bright if you're unfamiliar with the fluoro colors from vallejo uh, they are um they are extremely <laughs> extremely bright one of the things that takes a little bit of getting used to them is that they're they're not very opaque so you often have to, add, if you want them to, if you want to get them to go down on a model, sometimes you have to add them to another colour. Um, it, however, does make them pretty nice for glazing. Correct. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so we're kind of doing uh, that's fine for us here. We're getting a more, a more glazy highlight. We might put a little bit of lemon yellow in, but they are, um, they're probably pretty much going to be all we need. 
And it means we don't have to dilute our paint as much. Oh my god, that yellow. <laughs> it's so bright. Um, so yeah, uh, just checking a couple of questions. Uh, Sean, yeah, one hundred percent. Grab grab a set of D and uh, sort yourself out a new um, great and clean one. I'm looking after your one at the office very well, so don't worry. He's uh, he's very safe and sound. Um, Scaraman, yeah, the XL brush, uh, you can add that. You can, If you've pledged, then what you can do is you can add um, add the extra L. amount for the uh, XL onto your pledge. Uh, you can always amend your pledge value on Kickstarter. Uh, and then when it comes to uh, the back of pledge kit manager. or pledge manager, you can, then, um, you can then obviously select the options that are relevant to your pledge, if that makes sense. So hi to everyone new who's just joining the live stream. Uh, obviously, if you go on our Instagram, you'll see all the videos and uh, of the different steps that are involved with this great unclean one. We've done a few. We've done one previous live video this morning already. We're just doing another one now, just so you guys can see the stage that it's at. We are going to do probably another live one. Color. You know, super, it's like, super, it's like super a highlighter. Super vibe. Yeah. Uh, we're going to do another live stream about lunchtime, so twelve o'clock as well, just to see the model essentially when it's finished uh, for all the dry brush At least work. The skin bits. Yeah, the yeah. skin. Yeah, we're not going to try. And we're do probably going to try and dry brush the entire model we we could do like james was talking about picking out boils and stuff like that the other brushes and things yeah yeah but, we're, um we're trying to show what you can do just using dry brushing it's um it, i mean it's it's a bit more hyperbolic in terms of, uh, of what we're just showing but you can achieve a lot with it we're not saying that you should just be dry brushing a model though it marries up beautifully with other techniques and i think that's where the real the real power of dry brushing is is when you do involve it with with glazing in particular, glazing is beautiful with dry brushing. Yeah, it's not just. I don't think it's. It's never been for me. Uh, you know, a technique Sandy that you just lane. do everything with just it. Like and you then... pick up an airbrush, you don't suddenly start oh, exactly, airbrushing yeah. people's eyes. Exactly. But the beauty of what you can achieve with D and, and the smoothness that you can get is a lot of the a lot of the smooth transitions and things that you know you can get with with an airbrush. I think that's the beauty of this is that the, the smoothness you can get with the with with D gives you that option of do I want to dry brush this and get that for surface yeah. finish or do I want to airbrush it. Because um, obviously an airbrush gives you a certain amount of control, but at the same time, if you can do it with a brush, yeah, yeah. you've got that more sort of precision that you can get just yeah. from using your hand, especially I mean, with the smaller sizes also as well. As well, like, like this hasn't airbrushing is fast, but um, it's not been slow. I mean, this is know. not slow. <laughs> green is so bright. Yeah, like this, it, it might be a step too far. This green. Actually. No, I like it. I think it's, it makes it a really nice sort of putrid the skin, which is cool. Yeah, it is looking disgusting. I actually regret not being a brighter purple in the recesses. Yeah, I suppose, but the contrast yeah. value is quite nice anyway. Um, well, yeah, um, metallics are really cool with it as well. So um, the, the the smaller brushes in the range, so the extra small and the small, uh, they're brilliant for doing uh, doing tiny bits of detail. I've been working on a couple of bits and bobs for my own stuff uh, with those two sizes, and uh, you can get a lot of precision and accuracy just with them. And because the, they're, they're so soft, the smoothness of the what you can get with a dry brushing is, is really, really, really good. Um, he looks mega. Yeah, so it's, it's a little bit bright under the light. It's a bit saturated because of the light above. But um, in normal light, if you were here in the flesh and you saw the colours, uh, it is uh, it is absolutely <laughs> popping. <laughs> it's uh, it's brilliant. Um, so yeah, so we'll carry on doing work on it, guys. We're going to stay on the live stream for a bit longer, and then um, we will do a roundup video at about sort of twelve o'clock ish. Any more questions um, about yeah. use or application or colour or? Yeah, if there's if there's anyone's got any questions, uh, for those that are watching, if there's any questions that you want to ask about um, about the range, about um, the the product, the the dry palette, use of the dry palette, uh, dry, clean the brushes, um, the, the the moisture, uh, sorry, the dampening pad uh, that comes in the set, then uh, then yeah, feel free to ask. But there's a lot of information on the uh, on on the Kickstarter for you guys to check out and have a look at. Yeah, stick to, well, stick to your guns. The colours are ten out of ten. Thank you. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Well. Um, but yeah, no, it's uh, it's you know something that we uh, we're, we're super super proud of and it's super passionate about. Obviously, this new range. I think from the outset, um, you know, what we wanted to do with D was was produce a range of brushes which you know mitigate and and hopefully get rid of that stigma that dry brushing has got you know yeah. incorrectly. Um, it is a tool, and it's yeah. a, it's a damn good tool, and it's a far more versatile tool than people realize. It's not just fast. It's yeah, not, it's not like you get speed or quality. You can have both. Yeah, exactly, and that, that's Tommy Saul. yeah, Tommy Saul, exactly, yeah. yeah. Not and or, it's uh, it's not or, it's and. You can get the speed and results. How does it handle lower pigment paints? Some of the sort of uh, GW ones that maybe don't have so much pigment. Uh, they end up more glazy, like these fluoros, actually. Yeah, so, they uh, do work kind of similar to the fluoro, actually. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, or some of the scale seventy five ones. Um, you, you you want it to go. Uh, you have to add a bit more water with actual like thicker paints, uh, paints with higher viscosity, but. Um, it, 
you'll just have to do a couple more layers. But the, one of the beauties of it is like airbrushing, once you've done one layer, your last layer is dry, so you can do another one pretty much instantly. Yeah, um, that, that's that's one of the beautiful things of it. Um, and you are, and Sean, you're just asking, obviously, the density because the, because the brushes are so, packed so tightly. Um, the beauty of it is you do get this lovely, lovely head shape that re- retains its shape as well. All brushes, I mean, I've had dry brushes from from loads of different places. All dry brushes, admittedly, when they first get them, may lose the odd hair and bit of bob just because of the the way that they are. Um, but once, in ancient yeah. So this so this is one of the prototypes prototype. over the sort of four years of development of Series D. Look at that that is literal like dry brush perfection. That's a light bulb. Light bulb's what you want. Yeah. Um, so our Series D will wear to this shape, provided obviously using it from every single angle and you're and you're rotating. And if you had, if you use it like a traditional brush in the same direction, the yeah. wear might slightly be different. This but has had um, a lot of black on it. It's had a lot of Holger blue. It's been cleaned and it's um, it's still loving life. Yeah. So that's one of the prototypes. Well, yeah. Uh, I don't know if you've got your own painting. Instagram account, do you? You don't think you do? Uh, I've got my own personal. He's got Instagram, his own personal. Yeah. Byron Ord, Byron Ord, which people are welcome to follow. Yeah, and uh, and mine as well. Will is if you want to search, it's just James underscore Otero underscore Figure Art. If you want to find me uh, on there. Um, hi Emma, hope you're well. Uh, hope you are enjoying using the brushes which you've got. Uh, let us know in the comments if you've uh, if you've tried them yet. As I said, we are just working on this uh, great unclean one here. Which Emma is that? Uh, it's for the emperor. Emma, 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 yeah. Yeah, Emma's going to get to see them used in person. She's getting a demo in a week. So is that Firestorm? Yeah, it's Firestorm, yeah. yeah. So if you do have any questions, please ask. Don't be shy. Uh, feel free to chat to us about the, the range of brushes, about... Um, yeah, he's looking... Possibly he's the looking, brightest thing I've seen in pretty, my life. Pretty mega. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, so um, so if you do have any questions about the range of brushes, so you can see here, so he's been using uh, this super bright green, but if you look at the head, uh, it's still super clean left. inside. Uh, and it's so just the end. If I had sand on the base of the model, that's why I choose to clean it. But what I'll do now is... Yeah, I'll do you want to do some cleaning and just to show you what the hell the cleaning works? So obviously we get some of our brush soap. It's the one that this is actually just the pot of the normal standard brush soap. We're developing a different uh, different one just for for D in the sense of the smell. Uh, we don't like to include a different one in every single one. Just using a little bit of that soap. So I don't oversaturate my brushes. I don't ever dip them. It's very rare that I'll dip them all the way to in water because then what you're doing is you're putting in enough water to allow um, it's kind of reaction to draw it up into, into the, the ferrule. In the ferrule, yeah. you'll see even through heavy use, this even the ancient ancient brushes like nothing has worked his way to into the, the ferrule here. yeah so I've, I've drawn water onto my palette not sure if you can see that there take a little bit of it drag it off use it on the palette here you can see that there's there's paint coming off it's coming off on the washboard texture of the palette a bit more soap boop, boop, boop. i can't demonstrate things without making some noises <laughs> it's okay. guys i'm going to show you my uh, my easter bunny soon it's pretty good <laughs> you might have noticed that if any of you do follow me on instagram <laughs> Okay, um, uh, try and get this in here. I've been doing it off camera because I'm an idiot. Right, so scraping it carefully, pulling off granules and also reinforcing shape. And then I'll get a little bit of tissue and we use this to check our water slightly blue. So if blue appears, that's not from the bristles, but we're gonna use this to check if there's any color coming off. So still a little bit of green there. Yep. That's the only, this is the only thing that tissue paper is good for guys if i ever see any of you using it to remove paint during dry brushing you're getting a slap on the wrist <laughs> it's not allowed i don't think your hand can physically come out of the screen and, and slap people <laughs> <laughs> metaphorically they should be yeah. feeling that but so we're pretty much there then um so it's nearly want, clean now yeah, anyway i want to carry on using this brush so i'm not gonna i'm not gonna fully um fully go into it but at this point uh i make it wetter than i have done so far agitating this around 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 um, you can then run it off like that. Again, always pushing from metal to tip, from ferrule to tip. And then you finish and you shape it like this. Yeah, you put it into like a, it's, soap on it. it's kind of like tulip, a tulip kind of shape. Tulip yeah. shape, yeah. And then leave it hanging off the edge of a desk. Yeah. And then what you will see in one of the videos that's on uh, on the Instagram, you see where, where Brian grabs a brush that he's cleaned from last night's live live show. Uh, and then um, and then what we did is we just cleaned that one as well. Oh, I'm still on the client timer. I'm doing myself out of, Never mind. Out of bragging points here, aren't I? 
So this is a blue brush that's been it's used. A very, yeah, very it's a, blue it's a brush. whole. It, you move it. It's a Holdra. It's a Holdra bl brush that's had a load of Holdra blue. Uh, one of our favourite colours. Uh, so as you can see here, the amount of uh, the amount okay, of I'll blue that's on one. that brush. I'm take my foot out of camera because no one wants to see my foot. So this is what I do. My palette, pop it to the edge of it. Yeah. So here. So. That helps run it off the edge and then back onto the tissue paper we've still got a lot of paint coming off so when i'm doing it you'll notice i put a finger behind the bristles that's to back them up you're not there to go like no don't be doing this with a brush like like that that's for demonstration purposes only that is naughty that is not allowed yeah um, don't be doing finger, that finger behind the bristles they need that support when you're doing something so physical with them and wipe it out you could use a j cloth instead of tissue if you wanted at this stage bit of water onto the brush it's water a bit more brush soap and the good thing about the brush soap is that don't worry about transferring colour to it because you can easily just get a, yeah. a, a little bit of a, a cloth or something and just wipe the brush yeah, soap and it'll go clean. it'll go back clean again. Okay, uh, just working on the texture palette to remove the colour from the brush. Basically, here, basically, you can see the you can see the blue coming off of the brush. This is another reason to work on texture palette. You learn colour combinations by accident. Exactly. Like that blue works out really well. It works really well with metallics as well. Um, kind of finding out new nuances. Okay, so there's a lot less stuff exiting the brush at this point. So you can see there's a lot, a lot of colour that's coming off the brush now, which yeah. is good. You can which see, is what we want. You can actually see the history of yesterday's painting because we we thought it was blue, and now we're getting purple off underneath. Hey, T. Volkson. Uh, thank you for pledging. Really appreciate that a lot. Hope these videos have been helping you guys to understand the, the use of Series D, the technique that comes with it, and the uh, smooth dry brushing that you can get from using it as well. Um, but yeah, also you can see uh, the good old Mr. Unclean one there in the background. He's uh, bright as anything. Yeah, he's ready for a rave. Ready for a rave. <laughs> So again, just removing excess blue paint or the holder blue that was in the brush uh, previously. Uh, and again, something, something you can do if you've used a colour that is really strong and you've you've perhaps left it for a couple of days, which is not ideal. Um, you need to condition after this, but you can actually use paint thinner um, yeah. in small amounts. I would dilute uh, like one drop thinner in four drops of water, maybe in the dippy, in dippy, dippy well palette. Dippy well, yeah. Um, I may as well do that now. Actually, I can see them. Hi, Amy. Hope you're all good. Snuggy? Yeah, that one. Snuggy. <laughs> yeah, so we're just cleaning uh, cleaning the brushes at the minute right, just to so show you guys how to do it. So, so a bit of water one. into one of the holes on the, on, the, uh, on the sort of dry palette. This is thinner. It um, doesn't matter what type of paint thinner it is. I always use Tamiya personally. So that's probably like a one to three ratio. Use that in there and you'll see it. This helps it exit too. Good thing with this is also if you do use this, uh, if you do use uh, thinner to clean your uh, Series D, then always remember to uh, condition the brushes yeah. afterwards. It, that, it, this brush is going to have to have a full rinse. Now that's not a product that you should be leaving in, in the bristles. Brush. Yeah, it's not bristles. like our brush cleaner and restore it. It's a um, it's an aggressive chemical. No, so you can use the the process I, I normally do is that I would do as we've done here, use thinner to get off really stubborn uh, stubborn paint that's wedged into the bristles of the brush. And then um, I would use brush soap that comes in the sets, so either S, M or D. And then after that, there's a, the, the, there's a really good, uh, there's a really good, you can do two things. You can either use, uh, there's a really good Vallejo brush conditioner that you can get, uh, which is like a blue liquid in, uh, in a bottle. Um, or you can, um, or you can actually use shampoo, but um, try and use something that hasn't got loads of chemicals or anything in it. Uh, try and get something that's fairly, uh, fairly, minimal on its chemical content um but then you know it, it allows you to restore the brushes back to perfect perfect color and uh, always remember with d as well to set the head in that tulip shape as well so that when you when it's dried you can break it and yeah. crack it back open to the uh to the back to a better a better brush than you left it generally yeah. speaking in terms of the shape it helps the hairs point inwards yeah uh it's straight up for kind of uh, kind of like a bell yeah you yeah, know exactly um T. Wilson, glad you like Series S. Thank you so much for the kind words about that. Uh, really, really appreciate it a lot. Um, and yeah, the size two is a lovely size of, 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 of Series S. Size four is even better though. Glaze, glazing with size four is incredible. Yeah. Uh, Scamman, can you use the soap that came with the set as a conditioner? Yeah, yeah, you can. Yeah, of course you can. Leave it overnight. Yeah, leave it overnight, and then as you if you, if you watch one of the videos on the Instagram, uh, Byron sort of cracks open the head. Basically, it's 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 in a kind of like a tulip shape, and then he just uses that uses his thumb to sort of break it back open and soften it again from a set set sort of shape. If that makes sense. We'll share a couple. I've got a couple 
other pictures from Adepticon that we can share on our Instagram yeah, uh, yeah. demonstrating cleaning. So again, you can see the amount of paint that's coming off the brush. And this is a very stubborn colour, obviously, it's Hold Your Blue. Yeah. yeah, it's a very, very stubborn sort of colour um, that, that um, you know, it's wedged its way into the bristles quite nicely. This is what happens when I'm naughty and I leave things overnight. Yeah. We were tired after yesterday's stream. It was, yeah. Did any of you catch the uh, catch the stream last night on Facebook, guys? We'll catch you later. Uh, glad you like the brushes. And, uh, and yeah, I will, uh, I'll catch you around, Deed. So what I'm going to do here now is I'm going to leave these to set off to the side. Um, I've got the majority, a tiny bit of water there. Hey, Mike. So let's just have a quick look at this awesome, awesome model. You can see all the colours and tonal variances that are in there as well, which is really, really nice. Um, but we've gone quite crazy with what the... Uh, is in it? I think they should be pink. Okay. Really do think they should be pink. Let's do classic, and it'll complement the green quite nicely. How do we make... We, Start with a red. We want it to be really, really bright though, don't we? Yeah, we do. Of course it do. You can't have dull, uh, dull guts. So we're doing like those two mixed? Yeah, 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 yeah. I think that would probably be right, the best. Let's go. We're going to have to be more gentle on this, guys, because we're painting... We're painting in areas that are, are surrounded by colour that we don't want to ruin. Yeah. So this is going to be slightly more gentle application. Um, these are scary colours as well. They're bright. This is secret colour. Best colour. Best colour ever. For anyone that knows me very well, they know exactly what colour this is. What? I, I, who are you? Ankel? <laughs> Yeah, if you have any questions about Series D, feel free to ask, guys. Um, yeah, I'm more than happy to answer the questions for you guys. Yeah, correct, Mike, you got it in one. Um, <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, um, if you do have any questions about any of the colours uh, that have been used on him, feel free to ask and we can go through it. But most of the stages and step-by-steps are in short videos on uh, our Instagram account, so you can just watch all of those and watch the progress of this. It's been done in roughly about an hour and a half today. Um, yeah, we've left, the, we've left the timer running a few times, so... I'll, uh, I'll leave it for 10 minutes and start it again. The model probably, you, I reckon in two and a half hours you could get a really... Super, like, super good model. Like a really good looking model. No, that's just Byron being a bit naughty using the, what, the pristine white handles to take the paint out of the pot. Normally a, uh, a, a mixing brush or something like that. James be, took it away from me. Yeah, I took it away from him. It's back now. My yeah. mixing brush is, it looks quite full on. Yeah, but uh, but no, generally uh, brush etiquette, <laughs> you keep the, uh, keep the handles quite... Um, yeah, I'm making it more, quite clean. more pristine. That's a horrible colour. I want it more saturated, though. Uh, purple, violet, don't have red, blue. Alright, so this is liquid uh, liquid saturation here. Ooh. It's dangerous. DJ Golden Gorilla, uh, drop an email into support at artist-opus.com. Um, I'm glad you bought two sets of the brushes, but obviously, yeah, if there's if there's something that we can uh, we can do to help you, let us know. Just drop us an email uh, into um, into the support, and we will look after you. All right, that colour is now perfect. I added a bit of violet to that, and um, that is disgusting. Yeah, so that's that's old GW blood red. It isn't. Mixed in it's with, not GW, well, it's not old GW. It's it's close to blood red essentially. Um, mixed in with a purple. Which purple is that? Is that Zerus purple? Uh, Zerus purple. Uh, yeah. That's it. Yeah. And now we're just being really gentle, just to sort of layer those uh, layer those colours into the the gut sections. We of will the... dry brush around this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm actually going to um, once I've filled in all these sections that I want to fill in, um, I'm going to stipple around their edges and I'll add in some glaze medium for that. And that'll help the kind of fade that we're looking for. Uh, Dark Sea Wind 141414. Uh, yes, they are. If you go onto our Instagram profile, uh, if it, it is on Kickstarter, so they are is a Kickstarter launch project. So if you just go onto the link that's on our uh, on our Kickstarter, you can then go and have a look at all the options and the rewards and campaign and pledge, obviously for the one that's relevant for yourself. Uh, but they are available on Kickstarter now. Um, again, all the there's videos on there. There's um, our YouTube channel. We've got a video of how to use them, the technique, how to clean them, all those different bits and bobs. So do feel free to go have a look at those. Um, as for as for T. Wilson, as for the stippling, yes, we do. Um, we do start generally with a stipple before we go in and dry yes. brush. That's and Byron explained a little bit about that coating. now. Um, yeah, stipple base coating is absolutely magic. Um, I'm kind of doing it here actually. 
Um, I can't show you in like the the full on manner that I would because I'm trying to be precise. Neat. Yeah, while uh, while multitasking, which is a struggle for me at the best of times. Um, but yeah, it's um, stippling motion and it puts down paint incredibly fast and it puts it down in a way that um, then takes more dry brushing. If you're dry brushing, you want to dry brush over dry brushing or stippling, not straight over a primer. It makes yeah. a really big difference to the final result. I think this is going to help push the contrast even more, actually. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Nathan, glad you like it. <laughs> Yeah, if you've got any questions, guys, feel free to ask us about Series D, about any of the aspects of it. I know I've said it quite a few times, but for those new joining uh, joining the uh, the live stream or live video... These uh, poor brushes are getting such abuse with these colours. Yeah. I'm stepping to the small now. Yeah, so this is the small. Yes, that is Interstellar playing in the background, yes. We're massive Hans Zimmer fans, so uh, so yeah. <laughs> Our uh, listeners have good taste. Yeah, it's great music to uh, to listen to while painting. Uh, I missed any. I think that's uh, all of the guts on there. Obviously. So we are going to try and attempt to do this all with, with dry brushes. Um, I did think, mention about doing boils and things like that and painting it with like either Series S or Series M, but um, but for, for purposes of what we want to do with this, we uh, we want to basically show what you can do with Series D uh, and the, the result and the finish you can get with it. Right, so what I will do, which people, if they've been watching any of our previous stuff, will be they'll probably be able to guess what I'm going to say now, is I'm going to go back in and I'm going to... Tidy the edges. I'm going to Well, I'm going to pre-highlight it and then... The, the edge tidying will be got we'll do some more green over it at yeah, the end yeah um but before we do that a little bit of glaze medium so this is a very foreign concept to anyone who's dry brushing in the world i imagine actually this is we're trying to do stippling that is not opaque yeah so this is kind of, it's, it's pokey glazing if if you want to think of it like that we're glazing our model but Steve Olson, yeah, definitely. We're going to do some more live streams, so we'll definitely choose some other objects and do those. Uh, obviously, Let us know if there's something you want to yeah, see. Yeah, he's, he's mentioned Space Marines, so just doing some Space Marines yeah, to I see. Like space Marines yeah, super fast. so we'll, we'll, we'll definitely do that. So there will be a live stream over the next sort of 18 odd days uh, whereby we do do that as well. Um, so, yeah. Oh, missed a bit. So incidentally, uh, a lot of you guys probably wondering about the texture palette. It's something that's quite integral to uh, to the use of Series D. Um, camera, I'm being naughty. It's all right, don't worry. Tyranids, yeah, we can do some Tyranids as uh, well. I wonder what we've got. Yeah, we, we, have got, we have got some Tyranids in-house. I will show you a Harpy start to finish very fast. It's a great model for it. Yeah, but if you have got any questions, feel free to ask, guys. Uh, we are here to answer them for you about Series D, uh, the brushes, the, the texture uh, the texture palette, or, for example, the dampening pads. Um, or even if you've got questions about other pro other, other ranges, like S or M, feel free to ask. We'll uh, gladly answer those while we're or sort of painting. Like how we came up with things, how we paint, what, what we're painting at the moment. Can I ask James about painting red? Yeah, red, my favourite colour. Beast Claw Raiders, yeah, they'd actually be really good because there's loads of different parts oh, on them yeah, that would be tusk. really, really good. Thumb Tusk would be great, yeah. Um, so yeah, we'll we'll definitely get some more models and different models, and we'll do some uh, we'll do some live oh live God. streams. What's that? It's just the, the brush that we were using. Yeah, it's just such strong colour, isn't it? Yeah. Right. What I'm going to do is um, because it'll actually help with the cleaning process. Rather than stepping to another brush for my um, pre highlight, I'm going to use this brush because cleaning and painting are the same thing. So it doesn't particularly matter if this ends up being a bit purpley which is going to happen. Um, this isn't the final effect we're going for, this is just to, um, he says, can end up coming out really well. Um, this is just to put down some brighter colours for our next stages to grab onto. So, uh, the palette that we're using, it is a piece of plastic card that Byron has used as a texture palette for the last well decade ten yeah 10 years so all the just to move away from the model I know it looks super cool but just have a look at the palette all this texture that you can see on it's here paint. is paint that has built up over the last primed on it. sort of 10 and years I'd recommend if anyone is doing something similar or using a product that we might be coming up with anytime soon they should um they should prime it first you want it to behave exactly like a model like you, you're not looking to remove paint or test paint on something that is anything but as close to the figure you have you just want something where you can get broad strokes or something exactly broadly yeah. flat makes sense yeah 
He's actually looking pretty decent on it too. Yeah, he's good. He's mega. Hi Alex. Yeah, if you've got any uh, if you've got any questions, feel free to ask. Uh, again, we're just doing this whole live stream so you can get an idea of the product, Series D, its use. Uh, so you want these inside saturated or? Yeah, I think so. You want okay. them quite because well, the, the the deep areas would be quite contrasted, wouldn't they? And it's yeah. the bits that catch yeah, the light. You you want to match the, the the highlighting on the skin as you would because it's still flesh per se. So, yeah. um, Jay Rain. That's incredible to hear. Thank you so much. First and foremost, thank you for pledging. And uh, secondly, I'm glad that you, you know it's changed your whole mind about dry brushing. Uh, awesome. That is that is something that we you know when we came up with the whole project and over the years of buying and developing uh, the range of, of uh, Series D. Um, yeah, it was a journey journey of change to to, to change people's mindsets uh, on on sort of dry brushing and how you know what it can do as a technique. Um, Sean, yeah, Ideneth Deepkin, uh, Monsters and Sharks, there is some really cool models to uh, to actually dry brush. We have got some of the Ely things here as well that we can uh, we could work on as well. Uh, hi Sam, thanks for joining the live video. Um, yeah, the uh, the range of, uh, of D does come with various sizes, as I'm sure a lot of you probably have seen on the, the Kickstarter. Uh, the XL or the Big Boy is the uh, is the additional brush, which is, uh, is so here's a couple X of the sizes. XL, um, large. Uh, small is here and medium is there yeah so there is an extra small uh, but uh, that one we have no more prototypes uh, and it's just production no, run which is being created at the moment um, it's very hard to get small dry brushes right so we're trying to pick something that is going to exit paint softly um, and that means we've got variations with both its um, its fill how densely it's packed its length its width and the hair that's used so um, we're uh, we're making sure that we get that one just right. That's important. Hi Wayne. Hi Monkey Studio. Thanks for joining the live video. Hi Elementary. Thanks for joining the live video. Uh, yeah, if you've got any questions about Series D, then feel free to ask. We're just coming up to lunchtime, so hopefully we're going to catch a load of people when they come on to lunch uh, and they can join the live video just to see. What obviously, what... is that? Is that like orange? Yeah, I think we could do that orange, or okay. I think we could do. I, I was thinking that bright, a bright red because it would because it would complement the green really nice. Like a, like a bright, bright red, like, and then you can still add darkness to it. Okay, well, um, X James the Cat X. That is a company secret. We are not revealing the hair which is in the brushes. All we can say to you is it has taken four to five years worth of development and testing, loads of different prototypes of head shape and also head it's packing not, density um, and hair. It's, it's not, not unicorn boar, hair. It's not unicorn hair. It's also not boar hair, which everyone's telling yeah. us it is. A lot of people have been trying to guess and have said boar hair and things like that, and uh, we can confirm that it's not that, but we aren't revealing what it is because it is integral to our product. So we don't want to give that away. But uh, I hope that answers the question for you. Um, Thank you for all of you guys that are joining the live video now. Really appreciate it a lot. Uh, as you've, you may, if you haven't seen, there's been loads of videos, short videos on our Instagram account of this uh, great and clean one being started this morning, about an hour and an hour and a half, around 40 minutes ago, uh, and it's currently at this stage in about an hour and a half. So, uh, so it shows you the, the speed of which you can work with Series D to create these lovely, lovely transitions and, and finishes on a model. Uh, so there's that. All right. What I'm going to do is I'm going to a little bit more white this is really not so sort of white um, and then I'm gonna go over this with some red dry brushing but I want this to stand out so this is gonna look really unsettled because it is Scaron, they work brilliantly with metallics. Uh, oh, I've, that's gorgeous I've, with metallics. I've been using them with metallics recently, and um, the, uh, the they work extremely, extremely Chasing well. Some vehicles or something, maybe at some yeah. point. We'll do. We're gonna try and do quite a few live videos over the next eighteen days while the campaign's live, just so you guys can sort of see what the the application and use of the brush is. And uh, afterwards as well, we'll yeah. support the product fully. Of course, yeah, hundred percent. Uh, yeah, Sean, Harry, it's like Harry Potter. The brush chooses you, Phoenix, Feather, Dragon, my heart string. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's why, uh, that's why we have done it on Kickstarter, because all of them are being made just specifically for you. Your yeah. set that you receive is specifically tailored for you. Um, but yeah. Um, thank you for everyone who's joining, uh, joining the live stream. Ricardo, uh, Minuteman Gamer, thanks for joining. Uh, hope you are well and uh, you can enjoy these lovely sights of this great and clean one that's been done in about an hour and a half using Series D. Right, so uh, this isn't going to be pink. Um, We're going to go right. We're going to go red with it. While I've got while I've got light colours on my brush, I'm using it to create a stage of highlighting. Uh, yeah, pre-highlighting yeah. it. Yeah. 
you're going to get sick of it when you say that. Pre highlight, pre highlight. Unfortunately, pre-highlight. if you want, if you want to blow people's socks off with crazy, crazy bright colours. Diego, hi, thanks for joining in the video. I'm going to do. Okay, so it's looking pretty funky now, just with the pre highlights on it. It's looking nice. I, um, I belatedly realised I should have done this around his lips, that would look cool, wouldn't it? Yeah. It's all right, you can subtly do it. Use lip, it. Lipstick. Yeah, lipstick. <laughs> So if you notice, Byron's using the brushes really softly and gently. It's not like, using Series D is not like using other dry brushes. You don't need to be as aggressive. Hold them far back as you know. well. Like yeah. generally speaking, um, I hold mine on the wood um, and the ferrules are quite long and this is to encourage people to hold them behind it. That Wonder Woman in the background there. Yeah. All right, so um, we've done that. Uh, one more stage of white. This is gonna be- To really boost them. Thick but gentle. Okay. And Stu, hi, thanks for joining the live video. We're going to go in there with our red and uh, we'll see how that looks. I'm going to leave it a little bit of time to dry because I don't want pink, I want red. Um, and while we've got it on the brush, a bit more here. Yeah, it's all right, don't worry. He's a big boy. All right, then. Cheers, Sean. Thanks for pledging. Really appreciate it. Don't worry. I won't, won't, your missus won't find out. It's fine. You just use PayPal. <laughs> yeah, just use PayPal. Yeah. James, yeah, thanks ever so much. Uh, yeah, we, uh, he, he, holding them just back from the feral helps massively. All right, so this is super red. Let's see how this looks. I'm not sure if, like, well, we'll just find out. Where we're... Oh, my God. Bit more purple. A bit more purple, yeah. A little bit more in. So I've, I've even surprised myself there with how red that it, red it's, is. It's very bright. <laughs> it's very bright. So the, the white that's underneath boosts the uh, boosts the colour um, ever so slightly. So it just gives you that lovely, lovely transition of colour on those guts uh, and also on the skin and everything as you can see there trying to remain and keep uh, a little bit of the contrast that's in there as well uh, just so you've got the uh, you've got a lovely saturation so if you are using a smaller brush you will have to go back to the palette more um, that's one of the nice things about using a big brush uh, whether you're painting traditionally or with dry brushing it, um, it cuts back on um, on trips back to the palette or the dampening pad it allows you to just crack on with stuff yeah Yeah, so essentially the the the, it, the red that is being used, or the red and purple mix there, you can see it's on the on the palette, it is being added on top of that previous sort of like pre-highlighting stage. Uh, so you are kind of like glazing it on, but oh, you are, yeah. yeah. So it's, it's kind of glazing it on so that you don't you don't really uh, add too much difference to the previous layer that added on, but it just boosts the areas where you've done that pre-highlighting basically. Uh, so you can see that lovely, lovely. So you can see the deep red in the recesses, and obviously the brighter red that's been sort of put on top of those brighter areas there. Um, Minuteman Gamer, can you explain the setup moisturiser? I might make the foam wet, or do you make it wet? So with the with the damping pad, oh, damping pad, yeah. so I'll if you just you get a little bit of water from the brush, I'll do that. and you put that on there I'll like that, that, and that's all you need. One drop. Yeah, you don't need to, we are, when we say dampen and, and wet the, the damping pad, we are not adding loads of water in, because we don't want to add sort of massive amounts of water or saturate the dry brush method that comes with, the, or the technique that's involved with D. It's just adding a subtle amount of moisture to it to allow it to sort of, uh, reactivate when you move the brush and things like that so I hope that answers the question for you uh, but you, you will get with uh, with Series D you will get uh, you know information on how to use the technique look how vibrant that is that is, that is unbelievable <laughs> it's so bright Yeah, if you are interested, Minuteman Gamer, uh, on the uh, Kickstarter in update one, there's a YouTube video, or you can just jump onto the AO or Artist Opus YouTube video, and uh, or YouTube channel, should I say, and there's a, um, there's a video of us, or Byron, should I say, painting uh, this ATST from, uh, from Star Wars Legion uh, from start to finish using Series D and using the dampening pad and, uh, dry, uh, and also the texture palette as well. Uh, so, yeah, do jump on and have a look at that it will cover a lot of uh, points for you and a lot of questions for you of uh, of how to use it but the uh, 
the dry palette or this this texture palette is very important uh, to the process, not only just for cleaning the brushes, but also for um, for, for just mitigating the amount of paint you actually put on the model. Um, so Byron's just going in now and putting all the red into the guts and areas, and as you can see, the, the, the vibrancy of those colours on there as well is really, really nice. For those new to the live video, if you have any questions at all, feel free to ask. Uh, we're happy to answer them about Series D uh, and, and obviously the brushes, how to use the damping pad, how to use them. I uh, want to make sure that you do get to ask questions should you have any uh, any that you wish to ask. Are you going to use that red on the cloth on his backside? I don't know. It's very red. Like, I'm actually... It's, um, Maybe do a brown, because that will at least work a little bit do, with it. Could do orange. Um, uh, you could do orange. Color, what's the... You could, it sounds crazy, but you could do teal or a blue, because it would complement the red and the blue. could color. do deep teal. could do up from... Um, You'd love that, though. <laughs> could, could do up from Holger. Yeah, you could go up from Holger on it, actually. That right. would work quite nicely. Okay. I mean, we've been banging on about it, so... Yeah, you might as well. Might and, you, as well. and to be fair, if, you, if there isn't a bit of turquoise on there, you will complain, so... Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm quite... I'm okay with this guy so far. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm actually that that red is a bit too red in some situations. So on his lips and stuff, I'm taking our lemon yellow and adding yep. it to the red and the purple mix. Just gonna t tone it down ever so slightly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And obviously, any areas around that, we can then dry brush again just to tidy. Just oh, absolutely. To, yeah. yeah. Those guts are looking great. Very fresh. Yeah, they are. Could would you varnish these? Uh, I probably would, yeah, because you want them to look wet or moist. You yeah, know, yeah, um, they wouldn't. It's be... Another point of contrast as well, isn't it? With the rest the of thing the is, though, it's like anything. Like you know, uh, for me, I'm always thinking of what narrative you, you can tell with the, with what you're painting. So that might be an old wound, so it might not necessarily be wet yeah, because it could festering. be dried out and festered. Or if it's fresh, then obviously it would. Um, so Terrible yeah, little nurgles. So. Uh, the uh, see when uh, do we put anything on the on the uh, texture palette? So we actually uh, a good thing to do would be to get a bit of plastic card, or you know we've we've got something in the works that will come that will obviously be incorporated uh, with uh, as an option for you to to perhaps take with uh, Series D, uh, whereby you just spray it with a black undercoat and always then always black yeah always black and then uh, and then you put some start you can start stippling on it to start getting that you first can practice texture technique, on it. Yeah, it's a great place to it's a great place to to practice use and application of the brushes. Yeah. Uh, what's the size you're using currently? That's the small. small yeah. yeah. So it's a small brush that we're using currently. So again, if guys, any of you are new to the video, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Uh, more than happy to answer them. Uh, we're just going through. What we're using, how we're using it, the paints we're using. What the model is, what you'd like to see us paint in the future, it's all up for all up for grabs. Just so you guys can see a bit closer there. Don't always have to go top down like these areas, for example, I'll only hit if I come up from this angle. So generally speaking, I'm trying to go top down, but um, it's not a hard and fast rule. Alright, so he's looking pretty decent now. We'll just tidy up around the areas and we've got a bit of bleed and then, and then uh, we'll dry brush some more of the green. So what models uh, do any of you guys, would you like us to see, uh, to, would you like us to try and sort of dry brush over the next sort of 18 or so days that are left on the campaign? Let us know if there's any specific models. Uh, we can demonstrate them. We've had a couple of people mention just some Space Marines. Uh, there's a few Aegis Sigma models uh, and other bits and bobs. If there's any models that you guys are, you know, would like to see demos done on, the, the use of, of D and then obviously yeah, yeah. the dry brushing. This is how difficult it is to fix mistakes. So we're taking a tad of lemon yellow because you want this paint to be a bit more opaque than if it was just fluorescent. Both of our fluorescent colours mix up this kind of highlighter green. You know, it's a big brush, this is an L. I can hit those edges beautifully. See that picking them out? Yeah. 
for just catching that highlight of skin. Abaddon. <laughs> it's a big model, lots of details, which would be great. It would actually not be bad. We did some, um, you could show them the Chaos dudes. Oh, yeah, yeah. So we, uh, when we were at Adepticon, uh, uh, Byron done loads of demos on an obliterator from the uh, Shadow Spear box. Uh, the yeah, so you can see the non-metallic metal there on the end of the barrel of the flamer, which is quite cool. That's all done with a, with a Series D uh, as well, which is really cool. Uh, but you can see all the areas of highlighting uh, have all been done on there as well, which is really, really nice. Uh, so that's just uh, an obliterator. Oh, I'm glad I just showed, I just literally just showed that barrel where someone's asked about an NMM. <laughs> yeah. yeah, corn, corn, uh, corn flesh hounds are, uh, are, are, are great ones. Yeah, yeah. 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 Michael, uh, Sanguinius James his favourite Primark. Um, okay, so this is, this is kind of pulling everything together. We're getting a, yeah. bit, a bit of the yellow on these, uh, keeping it subtle. So Nathan, uh, you've asked about um, uh, you've asked about obviously how, how to mitigate the dryness, dry powdery look, and that is all done using the moisture. using the dampening pad that comes with you Series do not D. Want a dry brush. Yeah. you do not use tissue paper. That's not allowed. Yeah. So Series D, Series D is you know obviously a set of dry brushes, but it comes with integral technique, uh, which we've been demonstrating Ooh. and showing over the last couple of live videos we've done last night, and also the two today, uh, plus all the updates so that we've been doing. To some of our famous accomplished painters who have. Um, They've been pretty impressive. Yeah, it's uh, Bohan um, and David Soper and uh, also Adepticon, Andy, Rich and a load of guys came Neil by, the, well. Neil Hollis came by the stand uh, and, and really were sort of, a lot of them who'd never perhaps thought about it in the way that we, we're, we're sort of uh, approaching, approaching it, it. Uh, and a lot of them were actually quite quite taken back by it, yeah. uh, which, is, which was really nice to, to see and it was kind of humbling. Yeah, um, sitting there trying to teach my heroes. Yeah. <laughs> not fumble my words. I like your painting. What are you doing? But yeah, uh, but Nathan, just to answer your question, the the the, the damping pad that comes with Series D, uh, it's a it's a technique, a combination of using the texture palette and also the dampening uh, pad to create you know the super super smooth dry brushing, uh, which you can see on uh, on this great unclean one and also on any of the other models that we'll perhaps be showing you guys uh, on this live stream as well. Uh, so obviously the great unclean one is a very large model, but just to show you something a very small, here still you can Nurgle. see obviously this still Nurgle, yeah, but you can see this lovely plague bearer here uh, that has a lot of blending all done on it using the, the series that's d just to give uh, really just to nice give um, just to give obviously lots of detail work on there all picked out as well which is great so that's just a plague bearer and then we've got a, a couple of others just as someone asked about osl um and then i'll just get this to focus for you guys so you can see how soft and smooth that is uh for, for dry brushing uh, yeah and there's another one here as well as you can see but just that lovely subtle osl that's been done just by using uh just by using series d as well which is is there uh so that's it yeah damp brushing <laughs> exactly tm <laughs> trademarked um but yeah if you do have any questions please ask guys uh, we're just layering up now on different areas this um i'm actually really pleased with i pulled the yellow that's on the rest of the model that's been used there and that's kind of yeah snapping them together and keeping cohesion throughout the piece really nicely yeah. it's nice and subtle on the guts as well it's also allowing me to fix some mistakes here that i've made with the the quite strong reds we've used yeah i can just go and fade them in there this one looks great because i've, I've overspilled nicely with the reds people giving us love hearts yeah is there any science to the dampening of the paint uh makes it opaque the pigment a bit so it blends better uh, what I don't understand, say again slower. So, is there any science to the damp damping of the paint? Is there anything behind the damping of it, or is it the way that it works when it hits the surface? Uh, there's a couple of things. So, if any of your airbrushes, you probably let me stop that. Um, you probably put thinner in before you put paint into your airbrush because that means that the paint isn't going onto naked metal. It's exactly the same idea as that. If you dampen it before use, um, then paint will exit the brush easier. Also, when you dilute your paint. Um, you're, when you're painting normally, you are pushing transparency a bit, so that that, that works on the bristles. Um, in terms of, that's about paint leaving the brush, actually on the brush you won't get caking as much, and because it leaves more easily, which is down to the bristles, and the paint not being uh, dried out anywhere, um, it, it, it leaves in smaller, finer bits. So that's kind of the, the science explanation for it, I guess. 
And, and as we've said, like, you know, the dry brushing as a technique, it, you know, it's, we're trying to uh, get rid of any stigma that it has by obviously offering a much smoother finish and, and obviously showing yeah. that, you know, even though it's quick, it doesn't mean that it's a, it's a basic or, or you know, or it, a, a technique which, even if basic, isn't of a high quality. Oh, yeah, you, basic is fine. You can, you can apply it. Like, layering is a basic technique, so is glazing. Everything is a basic technique when you boil down to it, but it doesn't mean that its applications are limited or that it's... For beginners or it's only for speed painting or anything like that although obviously you can do it very fast if you're willing to take your time i mean like we're, we're pushing it here with what we're doing in, in the time we're given if you're willing to take your time you can achieve some absolutely crazy results with dry brushing um like beautiful beautiful nuances um soft uh, powdery color transitions and blends all of that stuff so yeah we are we're pretty much i think that's that's nearly us there with the skin actually i'm quite happy with yeah it's really really the good overall effect of that getting okay, a bit more yellow a bit more green lots of hearts from people which is nice yeah. <laughs> give me love guys give the big guy some love We plan to do a few more uh, live streams and live videos just so you guys can see the, the different uh, things that are, are very, uh, sort of achievable with Series D. We'll do some flat areas because yeah. this obviously we've picked a hyper textured thing here, but people are, are not uh, as aware. Yeah, show that. So if you guys caught uh, a bit of the live stream with the, the terrible audio last night on Facebook, you'll have seen uh, Byron working on uh, this uh, Redemptor Dreadnought uh, to give you an idea what you can do with tr sort of transitions and blends on, on flat armour panels. Uh, so as you can see here, it just gives you a bit of an idea. There's the stereotypical, typical dry brushing in that centre panel there with the, the sarcophagus. Uh, and then on the armour panels, you can see that lovely sort of transition from dark, dark to light and that sort of refraction of light on that mid panel there as well, which is really cool. All done just using Series D as well uh, and I'll sh another model which you may well have seen on um, on uh, the uh, Kickstarter campaign or on videos and things we've done is this lovely bust uh, from Frozen Ninja uh, as you can see here this uh, really 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 cool uh, amount of, uh, of glazing work that's been done just by using the brushes to, to sort of add that contrast onto the armor panels as well but yeah it has all been dry brushed it's all done with a dry brush uh, as you can see uh, the hair the armor panels uh, all the edge highlights everything fully we'd picked out as well people use it with other techniques but for demonstration purposes that's what you can achieve with it 100 percent dry brushing yeah yeah so that's uh you know it, again dry brushing is a technique which is a, sta a staple technique which is really good to, to sort of add to if you so wish um but yeah i do his undies yeah so we do his undies und yeah uh they're going to be holder blue we uh uh, yeah, we've got hold of blue. So we've only got one minute and 43 seconds remaining on this live video, unfortunately. But oh, no. but we will come back in a bit and uh, do a live video again just to show you guys uh, the, 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 where we get to. We're going to take it off stream, do a load of secret stuff with airbrush and everything. No, we're not. This is, uh, <laughs> this is all going to be stippled. Yeah. So it's all going to be done using a... Uh, using uh, What size are you using? Medium, is that? Uh, that is a medium. Yeah, so just using a medium D... So we're just stippling on. You can catch it one minute and 16 seconds of stippling. Uh, so I'm concentrating on the recesses and the darker areas here. Um, and then I will, I'm, I'm, I'm going to stipple through and kind of fade. And then I'm going to be fading up to lemon yellow, unsurprisingly, because that's going throughout the entire model. Maybe a green will work out. Yeah, so just under a minute left of us on this stream, guys, because of uh, because of the time constraints. Squeeze of, your questions yeah. in. So if you do have any questions for the last 50 seconds, feel free to ask and we'll answer them as quick as possible. Uh, any idea what time we'll be back? Uh, we'll probably have a bit of lunch and then we'll probably pop back this afternoon. Uh, the afternoon. Sort of about sort of 2, 3 o'clock-ish kind of time we'll probably come on. But there's going to be updates on on, on, kicks, on um on Instagram anyway there's be some videos and bits and bobs uh, do we clean the brushes between colours uh, yes it's integral you can you can between clean actual colours as you're working up through highlights no so yeah. if you're going purple light purple yellow um, white then no not between them brilliant uh, but we'll do some more in the in the video later. Uh, we will do more bits of information on cleaning again, just so for anyone who hasn't caught that over this morning. But thanks for, for watching the video, guys. For everyone who stuck around, for all those that are new, those that have come back. Uh, see you in the next live stream a bit later. Hello there, guys. How are you? Mr. Wardle. Good afternoon. Oh, the Andy Wardle. <laughs> You've already been referenced twice earlier, Andy. Did you get to see it? There you go. 
it's a dodgy Essex bloke. <laughs> that, would, that would be myself. It's certainly not me. Yeah. Don't worry. I'm uh, mitigating the uh, bis- biscuit and chocolate, so don't worry. Um, afternoon, guys. Uh, if you do have any questions uh, about Series D and you could, you missed the live videos from earlier, then please feel free to start asking questions. We're happy to answer. Uh, so we're going to be continuing a little bit on uh, this awesome model that we've spent uh, the majority of uh, a couple of hours working on. If you have got any questions, ask away. Uh, and over to you, Byron, just to really go over what we're going to do. Okay, um, so for those of us, for those of you who didn't join us before, basically we have worked up through progressive stages of dry brushing on this guy um, using kind of a zenithal highlighting technique, um, but using the texture in line with that, which you don't get to do with you using any other technique other than dry brushing. So the model was primed black and then it was stippled all over with a very, very dark purpley rich red. We've then dry brushed it up, um, paying more attention to the raised areas uh, which are upwards facing than the areas that are downwards facing with a pure white. Before that, to build up a load of work, you can see pictures of that on our Instagram. Uh, we'll put them on Facebook as well. And uh, then what we've done is we've taken a purple, fading through to green, to very, very crazy bright green, and we've stippled each layer, fading into the other, but each layer you stipple, you dry brush down on the previous one to kind of pick up this texture. So using layering techniques to work your way up the model. And then we've gone in two or three times, which is where we reference Mr. Wardle and is always pre-highlighting. Uh, it is never too late to pre-highlight. And we've gone in and used white a couple of times uh, to help us punch through the colors that we're using in the final stages, which are these super bright fluorescents here, which are from Vallejo. Um, Scale 75 is a great too. You can see that kind of highlighter yellow patch we've got on our palette there from doing that. So that's where we've ended up. Um, we've taken a kind of nice contrasting uh, deep red and used it on the disgusting areas, but we've highlighted that up with the same yellow as the rest of it, which helps us kind of homogenize these lips here, fix mistakes and uh, tie everything together. So now we have to decide what color we're painting as nappy and we've not quite decided that. Have no, we? I think a nice turquoisey kind of color will go nicely. Um, we want to show you a little bit of stippling as well, just to show you the sort of textures and things that you can create using the brushes as well. We can always stipple on another flat piece later. I could do a bit yeah. of dread or yeah. something. No, could you? Yeah, got uh, the dread one. Do a flat panel on the ATST. Yeah, let's do that. I think that'd be quite good. Should, uh, we, yeah. should we do that now or should we lead with, with Big Puppy? Or should we, should we show something a little bit special? Yeah, we'll show something a little okay. bit special, I think. So we've got a lot of questions about this, if you lift your camera up. So this is a really fancy piece of plastic card that I've been using for 10 years. Um, as a palette, and I know a lot of people, um, Tommy Saul paints off a, off a wooden paddle that he primes black, um, some people paint off tiles and stuff like that. One of the lovely things about having something you've built texture up on or comes with texture um, or anything like that is you are both testing and washing your dry brushes on the same surface and if you like go to here James, okay so you don't need to be too close otherwise it might struggle to focus but this kind of beautiful texture here that we're getting that's a result of testing on an appropriate place for dry brushing, not on a, like a, a paper towel or something porous. This has been primed and been covered in paint and has loads of different textures to it. You've got fine textures towards the edge, you've got big blobs, you've got hard edges, uh, you've got smooth sections, um, and all of this kind of helps inform us as to how our paint is gonna behave on the model. So in line with that, we've got something to show you which we've been working on uh, quite fast in the background. Given the amount of questions we've had, this is, an insert we're making which will fit into the boxes. Um, you can prime this any colour you like, it'll come in a number of designs and you can see it's already got some differences on texture on it. Um, once it's primed black you are good to go and you can even practice the techniques we're going to be using on this one, like you could stipple on this one. Um, it's fantastic for it. Um, we also have another really cool design as well. Yeah, I like this one. I think a lot of people are going to like as well. Um, so this will fit snugly inside your box, it's got room for the um, the dampening pad to poke through and um, then you can take it with you wherever you go. You can use it for colour reference if you've painted it in a particular way and then hold it next to your model or you can test things out and uh, have it there or you can just have it as a as a, an everyday usable palette to pop down on your desk um, particularly if you're low on space or whatever and um, these textures here these ridges 
these ridges, um, they're going to help pick out your brush um, in cleaning. And very possibly, I'd have one of these. I just use it for a month and then prime it black, start again, prime it black, start again, prime it black, start again. Yeah, and every time you do that, you're, you're adding extra layers, which increases the texture on yeah, there, does. and then uh, just gives you a really. And eventually, after ten years, you'll end up with something so, a beautiful <laughs> lumpy like monstrosity that. like this. Yeah. And mine kind of changes personality according to what I'm painting at the moment. So normally, it's it's turquoise and black and white, and then I've been trying to do colour a lot in the campaign so it's, it's been picking up some yellows and purples if you're testing out metallics or whatever you could prime this you could prime this thing silver if you wanted and then see how it um how it behaved with washes on it or anything like that it's a great kind of um just like a, a testing place for all things painting as well as a palette so we thought this would be a really nice neat addition to the campaign yeah so you can select which one you like and add it to your add it to your kit which is which is uh which is part of it as well but they yeah, are, there are an add -on, yeah it's, it's an add-on and we'll probably do that as an add-on uh just for it so we have got in true uh blue peter fashion we have uh one repaired earlier <laughs> we've got a couple so we've got very yeah so this is one of the early prototype ones. very early designs so that's me trying out stippling which actually if we're going to talk about how how you paint on flat areas yeah it gives you a really really cool uh, idea of what you can do with uh, the brushes that's in, in stippling off. That's yeah tape. so uh, it's just there. uh just gives you an idea of the sort of color and it pick, these, this is just dry brushing here as well testing it out um this you can see kind of this fine wood gray like wood grainish effect here yeah um you can test out subtle or um less subtle dry brushing and a great area for it and also i quite enjoy painting that yeah i had a good time, time. So let's do a bit of work on his nappy. My big puppy. Okay. So. So again, guys, if, if any of you missed the uh, live uh, videos earlier, if you do have any questions that you would like to ask about Series D, uh, any of the aspects of the kit or the, about the dampening pad, cleaning the brushes, uh, the different obviously sizes, how Series D is very different to any other uh, sort of dry brushes that you've probably experienced or used. Uh, Albrecht, hi. Nice to nice to see you on the live video. Hello. If you, uh, if you do want to ask anything about it, please feel free to ask any point and we'll do our best to go through all the questions for you guys. Uh, so without further ado, we're going to start working on the uh, sort of back cape part of the, <laughs> of the model. Yeah, so we, should we step on something flat later and how are we going to work up on this one, do you think? Yeah, how? I think, uh, Shane, because it's cloth, maybe use a different technique to just the dry brushing maybe, and just using the stippling maybe, or okay. I think maybe. Got lovely texture on it though. We'll have a play and yeah. see in which direction we end up heading. We'll do a bit of both. Do, do some texture on it first and Spray then. Spray turquoise then... with a bit of blue in it? Yeah, let's do that. Okay. So I've got some, uh, I've been using lots of uh, beloved old school paints on the desk today. We've got Hawk turquoise, yeah, what a colour. Absolute classic. Got this one on the black market. <laughs> <laughs> Out the larder. So I've already used the dampening pad. My bristles are damp. Oh, look at that. That's straight away. I like that combination of colours. You don't get this if you're just spooging around on a piece of paper towel. It's not the same. You don't get to see how things look over other colours. That's nuts. I like that combo. Um, so I'm going to pull in some of super potent colour uh, that we've used elsewhere on the model. This is Hold Your Blue. I'm going to quickly start stippling that on. I mean, this is going to take seconds. That's one of the joys of stippling. Be a bit more gentle where it's close to our, our bright yellow areas of the model. Oh, we don't need to be that close, I think. I think. No, that's my that struggles with focus. It's just because it's you're right handed. Do let us know, guys, if we're not in focus or anything. It's hard to tell when we're on small screens and we're trying to uh, to juggle everything. But yeah, if you do have any questions you want to ask us, guys, about Series D, please feel free to ask. Um, if you didn't catch the live videos earlier, uh, hoping that obviously we're doing a different couple of different times of the day, uh, we'll get obviously different groups of people, and therefore we can answer as many questions as possible yeah, for people. We might be able to cross over for some uh, American viewers at the time that we've started from yeah. what coast they're on. Okay, so base coat is down. Are we too far or too close to the model at all or anything, guys? Mm. Do let us know. Cool. So now just add in. Yeah, so all, right, all, all of it is done with dry brushing. Everything you see there has been we, done completely. We've been tempted to do other stuff, but for illustrative purposes, it kind of it makes sense for us to, even if it's slightly impractical and normally would go in with another type of, 
of painting, um, we're trying to show you exactly like a, a, an extreme version of what you can achieve if you only use dry brushing. Yeah, using a mixture of different sizes all break. So there's uh, a few different sizes that we used. We uh, used XL, L, M, uh, medium, and small. And small, yeah. Yeah. So now you're building up from that uh, from that original colour, mixing a bit of bit mixing more hawk turquoise into uh, the holder. Just increase the intensity of the colour. Just move that so you can see a bit better while it's being done. Really yeah, have a look, have a look, Albrecht. There's uh, there's uh, various pledges that are on there, and uh, obviously have a look at all the information on the Kickstarter. There's a video that we've referenced a few times of an ATST. Um, James can hover that in front of the yeah, camera. Yeah, I can now. put that on camera now just so you guys can see it. So there is a video of this ATST uh, sort of head on our YouTube uh, channel. So if you want to go and have a look at that, it's also on the Kickstarter in one of the uh, updates. I think it's update number one that that video is in. Uh, and you can have a look. It's a 10 minute video where you, buy, you see this being done from start to finish. So do go check that out. It explains the technique, it explains how to use Series D, and also other little bits and bobs on there as well. It's really useful for seeing what you can do on flat areas, which people don't think of necessarily when think of dry brushing yeah um it's all about the texture but you can create that texture as well as picking up texture that already exists uh what are we going to add to this turquoise to take it up uh icy yellow yeah so this is kind of our um our, our go-to boosting universal color universal highlight that we've used throughout the model we, we add in any fluoros uh see what the icy yellow does and then maybe chuck some in so uh, can you we get can you get the other series on the Kickstarter for Series D? Absolutely, yeah. you'll be able to add them as part of the pledge manager at the edge of the camp. That's campaign. correct. If you'd like them sooner, though, you can head over to the Artist Opus website. Yeah, so Series S is on general sale, which you can pick up uh, directly through the website. Uh, series M has just finished on on Kickstarter, and it's, uh, if you do late pledge, then you'll gain access to uh, the pledge manager as when everyone else does. Starting to build up the texture here nicely. So, because uh, the colour we're using has yellow in it, we're getting kind of a tonal variation as well as a um, sorry, a hue variation as well as a tonal variation. Hey Miles, hope you're good. Yes, and just working up the colours now through uh, through the various hues. Combination of dry brushing and stippling at this point. But we're, we're getting something that looks, because the stippling is being done more noticeably, we're, not, we're making it so you can see the stippling by the end rather than stippling and then dry brushing over it in a kind of glazy fashion. Um, this should help it look like a softer material. Yeah. And it's also adding that, that textual variance as well, so that it does look like a different thing to his skin. Yes. Um, you know, because we don't want to make it look just like it's exactly the same, but just blue. <laughs> yeah. So if you do have any questions about Series D, I know we've got a few uh, more people that have joined the uh, the the uh, live video. So if you do want to ask questions about Series D and all those other bits and bobs, then please do uh, you know ask those questions. We are gladly able to answer them for you. Uh, whether it's about using the dampening pads, using the technique that comes with D, any of the brushes, uh, anything about the Kickstarter. If you've got suggestions of miniature companies that maybe we should work with, we should show some of the miniatures we've got to our right for the companies we've been working with. Actually, yeah, let's grab some of those. Hang on two seconds. So. First up, I'll let you hold this and show. Uh, so first up, we have good. this is uh, the Shelley bust from Infinity Miniatures. This has some. Hopefully, this can be seen on camera. It has got some. Let's just get that to focus. A bit further away. Let's see if that will focus. There we go. It's got some amazing texture here that you could only pick up with dry brushing on the lip. And um, I really like this piece in that you could you could paint it to look really evil or quite benign, and it just depends on the hues you'd be using on it. Um, gorgeous texture on the hair as well if I pull that back and pop it there so this, this next one's from an earlier live video that we have we've also got a second one but I can't seem to see where it is at the moment back. Uh, oh yes there is uh, so we have another bust here got two of these these are lovely and these are by Frozen Ninja yep so you should definitely go check those out they're going to be uh, up on our Kickstarter very very soon uh, so that's those um, and then we have a range of other products as that's well cyborg base 
which has been done, is in there as well. Kind of uh, interesting flat areas on the back of that one as far as transitions go. We've next got some bits and bobs from Mantic. Oh, these, these are great, so I'll take off the flame on its own. Um, so this one uh, was great. This is the first time that I've actually managed to do the kind of realistic flame uh, working up from white towards darker colours and super fast. I think it was 25 minutes to get the entire piece done. And we did a kind of a... Uh, the log part or the part of the pyre the that goes underneath it. Yeah. Dry brush that up as if it was glowing too. Yeah, so you've got a variation of materials there, obviously rock, wood, and also the flames as well, which is quite it's cool. Really nice. And then this one, should we grab the lizard man from... Mm, yes. So this is from um, Mantic's Hellboy. We haven't managed to photograph this one and do him justice. Maybe I think video actually is closer to doing him justice. Yeah. There is some really interesting variation on this. Um, and it's a very nice piece to paint fast and pick out the volumes on quickly, but that one came out super well. Yeah, it's really cool. Uh, Patriot, you're asking about the dampening pads. Uh, so the dampening pad, which you can see there, just being used, uh, what it does for the, the included technique, which comes with D Series D, is it allows the paint to transfer onto the model a lot easier. Um, Leave also, the brush yeah. softly and more easily. Yeah, and gives you a much, much smoother finish when you are dry brushing with it as well. Um, now, with, with the dampening pad, we're not putting a lot of water into it. It's literally a cup of, literally a palette, tiny, we'll tiny bit of dot of water or two. It just shows how smooth you can get the, the result. And as you can see, the, uh, the the model that obviously we're working on at the moment has all been done with a dry brush. There's, and a little bit of stippling obviously involved as well as what Byron's doing now. But the majority of it has been completely done, or all of it has been done with uh, with the dry brushes and with Series D. And using the uh, the, dr the uh, dampening pads and also so the texture See the pad. edges I'm picking out now. If, if we've got paint leaving our brush um, easily and smoothly, we can do this without it it looking chalky and we're barely applying any pressure here if you um get to where i'm holding the brush so i've been pushing this a lot like use the metal as a guide if you if you're doing softly softly dry brushing especially if you're just about on the metal you're behind the metal then and you're not here super close on it then you're going to be painting more gently and um that's just going to encourage the technique to to look more soft and be done kind of in the manner that we're intending yeah, with um, you know, uh, Paint Omen is asking uh, if we're using airbrush dedicated colours, uh, we need something to uh, we we need to do something special to use them with the dry brush. Nope. No, they work actually very very well. They, 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 they just end up diluting them less yeah. than with other colours. And they tend to glaze a lot better as well they as do. a result of that. Yeah, so, they absolutely do. So they do work very very well. You can use any like dry brushing is open for anything. Um, you can use uh, paints that are formulated for dry brushing, absolutely obviously. But I I actually prefer using normal paints um dry brushing paints they're there for kind of like the jelly texture ones they pick out just the edges very well so there's a time and a place for that but with the inclusion of stippling and kind of building up volumes i uh, i prefer to use kind of traditional uh, i guess you call them layering paints if you're looking for a kind of generic phrase for them that's looking right already actually yes yeah, i can make up right so i'm gonna go for some real pokey pokey stepping now and we're going to have to be quite careful here so i've got more on uh, the brush than i did have in my last steps but i'm going to be going more gently yeah Battle roll. Um, yeah, there is a video. If you go onto the Artisopus YouTube channel and just That's ask, um, Hello, just ask, ask about it, um, there's a there's a there's a video on the YouTube where Byron does uh, this ATST turret, which you can see here. Uh, this has been done in that video in a 10 minute section, and there's all about cleaning in that video, uh, along with obviously using the dampening pad and everything is in that video. We have covered it. Uh, I don't know if you probably didn't catch some of the earlier live streams, but we did obviously go through it then. But just to go over it again, uh, the cleaning of the brush, the whole reason. Why we use uh, this texture palette here and also the uh, the damping pad as well using those two together allows us to clean the brush as we work in between colors cleaning and dry brushing are the same thing you're removing paint from the brush on bits that stick out so there is no reason why if you're introducing moisture throughout the process as i am here um, your brush shouldn't end up um, cleaner than a normal dry brush would if you were just going back and caking on paint again and again so i hope that helps you out Hello, Tom, as well. But do go, do go check that out on uh, on the YouTube channel because it is on there, and it's also on one of the updates on the Kickstarter. I think it's update one, uh, the first update that we did. There is a uh, link to that video in that update, uh, so do go and have a look at that. 
but yeah if you have any any questions at all guys about the brushes or anything please don't hesitate in asking we're more than happy to answer those for you we've got a few things we're going to show you in this uh, live video this afternoon this uh, this class section's actually gone faster than i thought it would so i think we're we're nearly there what i'm going to do actually is i grab a small brush and I'm gonna deepen the shadows a little, maybe with some purple. Yeah, I think that'd work, yeah. Or will that make it look too much like the rest of it? It looks too much, a little bit maybe. Deepen uh, it with a blue? Yeah, with a dark blue. Okay. All right, I'm pretty pleased with that. It's looking nice and soft. So the bamboo, the texture palette that you see here, this is actually just a sheet of A4 plastic card that uh, is about 10 years old. So it's got about 10 years worth of paint on it that Byron's used for all of his dry brushing over that, that period of time. We are going to be releasing these, uh, which are texture palettes that you can add on to your Series D set. There's going to be variation in different uh, designs. Oh, As you can it. see, we're just starting to use this one here. And uh, it will allow you to add something really cool to your set. Uh, and you can use it to practice with a brush, practice a technique, and learn yeah. how to, to cl and clean it as well, obviously. All right. So um, what I'm going to do here is a lot of the time when I don't feel I've used the perfect that's on a brush, if there's another area of the model that I would like to be pre-highlighted, I'm going to make use of the paint that I've got on the brush. And normally, I'd, I'd, like this would be the base, probably. I was going to be doing it, but anywhere that hasn't already been painted, you can use it just to help clean the brush. Help clean the brush, and you you add in some pre-highlighting to those areas. And if you wanted to get really fancy, if you've got the same colours working your way throughout the model, then you're you're helping homogenise everything as well. Yeah. God, it's quite warm here in the UK. The uh, Normally the dampening pad wouldn't be drying out this fast. No. We've got some balmy weather. Where are you guys all from? If you'd let us know, that'd be great, just so we know where you're from. Yeah, do we have any Americans? Anyone bright and early up for us? Yeah, we tried to do some different time slot videos just so a lot of people can catch it. Just taking some more water to add into the pad. Yeah, so it's literally just using the end of the brush just to, to grab a little bit of water. Um, bamboo painting. A bamboo design would be nice. <laughs> <laughs> So Ben Ben's from Phoenix in Arizona. Wicked. Switzerland, West Coast US. Amazing. So cool. Got global. People, got, got global people, which is great. Privileged. Yeah. Okay, so I've kind of you can see here, um, actually that brush, I'll put it there. Um, if you you can see in the inside where where it gets used more, it's actually started cleaning itself very, very nicely from what we've been doing there. All these exotic places. I'm from Sheffield. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing wrong with Sheffield. I think Sheffield probably looks beautiful today, whoever that was. All right then. So, pretty much clean that brush. Um, next step. Add some contrast into the cloth. All right. Then. We're going to use a smaller brush for that, I believe. So let's grab back a baby brush. Now we only cleaned these a couple of hours ago, but we're okay. So I've, I've just cracked that um, it wasn't a complete point. Let's, let's grab one. I've not cracked. So that's been cleaned. So that's uh, been cleaned and it's been set. Um, and then you do this and you just wake it up again. And it comes back to life. you end up getting a brush like that and it, it keeps them in a, in a nice tasty point. Got a beautiful clean brush and I'm about to put the most destructive colour in the world on it. <laughs> Yeah, so if you're just new to the, these live videos which we're doing today, uh, we're going to be demonstrating and showing you uh, Series D, which is the dry brush range which is currently on Kickstarter. Um, the brushes are designed for dry, for, obviously for okay. dry brushing in a very different kind of way. So this is, I'm basically, smud, I'm, if anyone's ever used dry pigments, I'm kind of gently shading the model just by stroking it here. Um, if we hadn't put down texture with dry brushing, this stroking would barely be picking anything up. But because we have, it'll do quite a lot of work and we can just use this to get a little bit more contrast in the recesses or also smooth out, smooth out shades um, or transitions that we didn't like. Yeah, so the whole model that you can see, guys, for those of you joining uh, the, the stream now, uh, this whole model has been done using Series D and is all done by dry brushing. Uh, we've worked over it over a number of hours. We're two this hours morning. and ten minutes in. Yeah, so two hours, ten minutes in. Um, pretty, just on the pretty time, solid. as you can see there. As far as uh, 
the speed painting results go, I think. Yeah. So, again, if you have got any questions about Series D, about the technique that comes with Series D, the texture palette or the dampening pad, uh, then please feel free to ask. We're more than happy to answer those questions for you guys, cleaning the brushes or the different sizes of the heads, um, or, for example, you know, the uses of them. Um, what we've tried to do with Series D is uh, is create a range of dry brushes that gives you a very different way of, of finishing the models off, uh, and also you know gives you a much smoother and better finish. Um, you know there's a lot, there is a bit of stigma associated with it, which we wanted to create something which uh, which you know help dispel that helps dispel that yeah because it's a very very good technique that a lot of people it's, you know it's seem a to simple, think. Simple, versatile, extremely broad technique. It's just basically texture painting. Exit twenty three games. You can do it as well. It's uh, it's you know you say you make it we make it look easy, but it's you know but but Byron's been doing this for a long time and it's about five years worth of development with the products. <laughs> the product's pretty good. It's very very process driven driven. So basically, um, and I've been telling this people this for a long time. As long as you you test your brush somewhere, you cannot make a mistake on the model that's going to be a big permanent mistake because number one, dry brushing isn't a completely op opaque technique. Number two, you know how it's going to behave because how your brush behaved here is how it's going to behave here so the, the processes we're trying to push are never dipping more than you need to so you'll see that i kind of pulled to the side of, of the of a flat palette uh, i don't generally dip into pots and if i do it's quite careful pull to the side twist my brush around so i've got paint on every side of it um then test it on a lumpy bit of my palette and then when i go to a lumpy bit of my model I know that I'm not going to get any nasty surprises. So if you're painting a model with good texture, then you are allowing the model to do the work for you with this technique. That's that's the entire idea behind it. Obviously, there's a certain amount of, of creative skill and kind of mastery of it like there is with anything, but it's very, very process-driven. It's like having, I don't know, um, uh, recipes with an airbrush or, 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 or like a particular paint mix or something like that to help you with colour theory. With this, it's how much paint is or isn't on the brush. All right, then. I'm pretty pretty pleased with this nappy. <laughs> I'm pretty good. Let's do, um, should we put some, um, are these going to be like rusty? Yeah, I'd imagine so, yeah. Okay, it's shall still, we? It's right near with that area, so I don't, <laughs> I don't think it'll be looked after. All right, so um, a bit of Doomball and a bit of, we've got Mars or Kalahari Orange or, let's get Mars. So we're doing is adding the colour to the dry palette in a, in a bit of a line, uh, just so you can draw away from it as you're using it. Um, and then we're going to put a bit of the uh, is it Doom Bowl. It's Doom Bowl. Oh yeah, yeah, I love Doom Bowl. It's really nice, warm brown. Absolutely lovely colour. Um, so these are going to be like properly caked in rust. These ones. Rusty puff <laughs> Uh You're not pointing at it. There we go. Do you want to do any of the like silver showing through, or is it all going to be rusted? Uh, well, it's, it's your choice. I think it would be quite rusted to be honest. But um, but if you to put some nicks of silver in there, we could do a bit of a, a bit of a metallic on there. We might get a bit more contrast, might we? Yeah. If we've got some silver bits in. So Blood Angel seventy eight. There, firstly, good name, and and secondly, um, James isn't biased. Yeah, he paints everything biased. in red. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so the, in Series D, in the standard set, you've got four sizes. Uh, you've got everything from a large through to a extra small. So there's four sizes. There's large, medium, small, and extra small. Uh, and then there's the additional extra large uh, big boy brush. Um, there's the bigger one that's an add on to the uh, to the standard set. So there's five in total available um, if on the on the Kickstarter campaign. But if you jump onto if you jump onto the Kickstarter campaign, which is linked in the uh, the top of our Instagram account, it's the link that you can click on. Uh, it will take you through there and a few videos on there as well that you can check out and have a look at. Um, just while Byron's doing that, just in case obviously that's got loads and loads of colours on it, but we showed this. Um, earlier in the earlier streams there is um, a couple of models we've done in a monochromatic kind of uh, scheme so you can see obviously how you know white uh, looks on a black model uh, and this was done very very quickly you've almost got 
non-metallic metal there on the barrel of the uh, flamer as well and that's all just achieved just using the brushes and the various sizes i believe this had the uh small and the medium on it if memory serves correct and also the large i think yeah large. Yeah. so all, all of them were used on this to create this lovely sort of uh, you look at the stippling on the shoulder there yeah um, so that next to the dry brushing that's caught out the um the trim as well the edges really as well so all the edges picked up there as you can see so it does, the series d does give you a lot of control when you're using it as well which is uh, really really nice we'll jump back to the rusty chains on his uh, his back <laughs> so i've just added white now because i want to get some i want to get some more highlights on these as if they were metal and have the rust going on underneath um and they're picking up beautifully actually Trying to do everything, trying to do everything in streaks, and then what I'll do is I'll go back and I'll grab my orange, which is drying out at like turbo speed in this balmy English weather. It gets very hot. It is. We're supposed to have a hot weekend as well coming up. Yeah, so do ask any questions you got, guys. If you if you're just joining the uh, the live stream, then please feel free to ask questions about Series D. If you haven't checked out the Kickstarter campaign, um, we were happy to answer as many questions for you as you may have. Uh, we can cover the uh, dry uh, the texture palette, or we can cover the damping pad, or the brushes, or anything you want to know. Then feel free to ask. So normally I wouldn't go in with this much paint, but because rust itself has a texture. We were trying to create that and emulate that. Yeah, so we, we've spent loads of time talking about how we don't like caking. I'm trying to do some caking here, but on the model. Perfectly correct, Bamboo. Yeah, that's the, after you get the lovely smooth uh, sort of finish done with a dry brush, you could then go in and start glazing. And in fact, on that one, if memory serves correct, you did, you did do a bit of glazing on it. It's yeah, just the, the bottom, bottom of the pad, isn't it? Yeah, There's so, two stages of black glazing with a size four. Yeah, so just a bit of glazing done on there just to add that contrast back to the deeper recesses on that shoulder guard or panel there, as you can see. But you can do it with any any colours, obviously. Um, Purple, just, something yeah. like that. Be interesting. Bit, of a, bit of a bit of ink. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so just to make sure this rust isn't the same colour, dabbing on a bit of brown now. It's the Doom Bull again. And then this orange, I'm going to pick an even brighter orange we don't want this it's i'm obs because it's such nice texture my brain's just telling me to like be smooth and consistent but i'm um, i'm having to force myself not to so i'm, I'm picking out <laughs> bits and i'm going to try and add interest to those paint paint, paint badly slash well in this situation on <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing how you fall into habits uh but troll slayer that's nice and uh Nice and subtle. Pack extra punch cleaning. Uh, really, really simple. Uh, the brushes actually clean themselves as you're using them because we're using this texture palette and also the, the moisture that's added from the Series D dampening pad. Uh, as you're using them, it does um, it does uh, clean the brush so you can remove the majority of it. And that's the purpose of the uh, of the texture palette to use it to, to remove uh, really an decent, aspect. Isn't it? It's really good. Yeah, to remove an, uh, the excess amount that's on the brush. You are With the dry brushing technique, you are obviously removing paint from the brush on the surface of the model. Um, and rather than um, rather than using uh, a bit of paper, which is not what we recommend when, when nothing doing nothing porous, guys. You're yeah. banned from that. Yeah, no, no, nothing that absorbs uh, absorbs anything. So no sponges, no uh, in the sense of uh, like to, to take the excess off. The, the the dampening pad is purely to add a bit of moisture you to the to the process. A, a primed surface, or like you see me using skin a lot, just something that is not um, is not going to suck a load of stuff in with capillary action. You've asked about cleaning the brushes. So I've used a load of quite strong colours, including a really deep blue on this brush. Um, I'm going to pick an area of the brush that it doesn't match if I hit and um, see how much of our paint is leaving there. Not very much. We're, we're pretty much clean at this stage now. Yeah, so you just show the brush just so you can see what I mean. So obviously it's been used to get the focus. It's been used, but you can see it's it's removed most of the of the paint from the brush and inside the no, head. No deeply embedded stuff there. No. We're, we're not deep. We're not dipping heavily in our paint ever. That's why we're always dragging off the palette. Yep. Um, that's looking great, that little yeah, bit there. Isn't it really good, yeah? Hey, ART40K. He's been using uh, D during this video for a Vanguard Hunter cloak, apparently. Sweet. So, yeah, that's good. Amazing. Um, all right, so what's next? What should we do? What, what do you guys think we should next do using the dry brushes? Should we work on the sword or the chains, maybe? Or, horns. you know, or the horns? Well, Let those us know. horns just going to be bony? Uh, yeah, like I, a think nice so, I, think so, I think so, yeah, because it'll, it'll complement the white quite nicely. Okay, then. I can't find any Vallejo ivory. 
What am no. I going to do with my life? There is a little bit. Oh, there's some colours that you could probably exactly. use there. Yeah. yeah. Also, uh, packets of punch. If you go onto our uh, YouTube channel, there is a video. Uh, I know you joined the, the stream recently, but if you, there is a YouTube video on our YouTube channel where Byron works on this. Uh, for 10 minutes and achieves this lovely, lovely transitional sort of blending using the dry brush on, on there. And we have all the details of how to clean the brushes and look after them, use the damping pad and everything in there as well. Uh, so make sure you uh, make sure you check that out. And it's also linked on our Kickstarter as well. Uh, so a lot of people want the sword to be painted, so I think we're going to do that after we've done oh, the boards. Well, we can we can skip the ones. Yeah, well, we can. I'll, uh, I'll put down a little bit of texture on them. Let's get more work on the sword. So should we do that in a monochromatic? Or Thanks for picking the most intimidating part of the model. Yeah. <laughs> really appreciate it. No pressure. Uh, yeah, I don't know. We, we could have like a kind of a, a blue steely metal going on where we introduce yeah. a bit of the blue that we've got elsewhere and have it largely black and white. Yeah, let's do that. Okay. No power weapons here then. No. Well, um, yeah, a bit of a glow, I suppose. But these yeah. are looking... So these horns are... Looking mega. Yeah, they got great texture. So... This is um, kind of softly, softly. Yeah, it's great. Darling, thanks ever so much for the kind words. Really appreciate it. Yeah, we, you know, uh, Series D has got five years worth of development behind it. Um, we have many a prototype that, you know, to get the right hair, the right head shape, the right sort of um, softness of the it's bristles. It's no exaggeration to say yeah. that in five years I've been through at least 25 different, different like kind of styles of brush because you can vary the length, width and fill of the hair. That's how much hair is, is packed into the ferrule as well as the hair itself, um, never mind handles and all that stuff. So you could actually be changing one part of a brush when you need to be changing the other. You're like, this is too, this is too soft, so the hair's wrong, when actually you could just make the hair shorter and it would be perfect. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's not an easy process working out something like this, but we're, we're pretty proud of this. Yeah. I think and, we've and, achieved and something special. I suppose the good thing as well is your kind words as well about the quality that we're achieving with, with them. Uh, that's exactly what we wanted and wanted and hoped that would happen when we released Series D because uh, dry brushing, as we've mentioned, uh, and you probably didn't catch it if you just joined, but dry brushing is a technique which, you know, is, I would say, looked down upon a little bit and it really shouldn't be because it's a, it's a very core, you know, core technique yeah, to, get, to get in. Um, to get in a lot of <laughs> yeah, look mega. Yeah. Sorry, guys, I'm ignoring you for a bit while I finish these. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we're going to work on the sword uh, shortly. Uh, that's going to be the next step. We're just going to do a little bit, done a little bit of sort of uh, pre-highlighting on the the horns just to get a bit of colour on them we to have make beautiful texture. So we're kind of picking it out in a very, a very clean way. This is our our base coat, if you will, on the horns. Being careful because I don't want to get this bone colour on our nice super saturated green we've got going on. So I'm using a small here. Um, I'm a big fan of always using the biggest brush for the job, whether it's dry brushing or otherwise, but sometimes you just have to step down and use something with a little bit more delicacy to it. And with this, because this has an actual grain, I'm always going to be going across the grain, never down it, because then you're more likely to get streaking uh, down in the recesses, and we want to leave those recesses there for contrast. Yeah. So again, guys, if you have any questions and want to know a bit more about Series D, please feel free to ask. That's what we're here to answer for you guys while we're obviously painting away. Um, happy to answer those questions for you. Uh, if you haven't checked out the Kickstarter, then it is linked on our Instagram account. You can just click the link at the top uh, and it will take you to that where you can find out a bit more about Series D. Uh, a couple of videos on there, lots of images and uh, information regarding obviously the range of brushes and uh, the, the Kickstarter in general. Um, we've covered obviously cleaning for those of you that are stuck around. We've covered obviously the 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 um, texture palette as well, which is integral to it as well. Um, and we're just going to be working on the sword shortly. I think we'll be adding a bit of blue to it as well. Which yeah, be we good. will be. Are we going to be fading these horns to black later, do you reckon? Yeah, I think so, yeah. Because uh, it always looks good when you do that nice, lovely sort of black fade on them that as well. That gives us an excuse to fade, the, well, fade, highlight them up to white close towards the body as well, which will give a really nice area of contrast. Um, James and I were talking about this before, like on this model... Um, Really, you would be going and you would be picking out teeth with a brush brush. Yeah. Um, we cannot dry brush those. Our brushes are good, but they're not they're not magical, not quite anyway. So um, we're trying to do this 100% with dry brushing, so we're not quite sure what we'll do with the teeth, but you would definitely go back in there and for contrast, pick out your eyes, your teeth. The thing is, I mean, we, like we can do as much as we physically can with it, and there's no reason why we can't go in and do the rest with another range, be it S or M, just to show what yeah, yeah. a combination of the ranges will do on models. Uh, you know, we can do that. Um, but yeah, let us know where you're from. If you're if you're new to the the video, it'd be always interesting to see where you where you're from and find out you know where, what part of the world you're in. Uh, also, as well, you know, if you uh, if if.
if you overlook dry brushing, let us know. You know, hopefully this has you know changed your changed your mind on it, and you can see obviously what you can achieve with uh, with the right technique and the right way to apply it and the right way to use the brushes, and obviously the right brushes for the job. Right. So do I have to paint the intimidating sword now? Yeah, let's do the for... sword because people have asked for that. So. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm just going to um, clean off the uh, the paint I've still got on my brush. I want to make sure that I'm getting rid of most of that. So I'm just picking an area of the model. It doesn't matter about particularly. And then getting a pre-highlight down on it for free. All right, that brush is pretty much clean now. Yes, yeah, so if you want to show the brush, just to show how it's cleaned quite nicely. Um, we'll just get that in there so you can see a little bit of our yeah. on it but considering we've not even touched soap yet it's doing great it's still soft and fluffy at the end that's what matters all right this sword so what we what we're doing on this we, are we going to have it like be like light here dark here dark here yeah let's, let's alternate it up a little bit and yeah. what are we doing with these uh let's just do paint those them, do, paint do, them do, do, like do. normally yeah there's bone maybe normally. yeah there's bone maybe i think bone. yeah do them as skulls in the sword it's just chaos you've got skulls in the sword we'll just have bone on my yeah, brush no, no, do it afterwards it's fine i can't do it afterwards at all oh okay just don't just do them just do them with the blue glow then it's fine it's no right. issues we can always we could actually mask those that'd be kind of interesting but we'll um We'll step to a probably a large, yeah, yeah a large here. So um, this is the large Series D brush that we're going to be using now. All right, I'm going to pre-highlight this because I don't know what I'm doing yet. If I'm honest, um, it's a bit of experiment as well. Yeah. Um, so again, using the texture palette to just work the the paint into the bristles a little bit, add going to the dampening pad just to literally just add a little bit of moisture to the brush, God, uh, which is integral to the technique. The yeah, it's it? very dry here in England at the moment. We've got like a, an early summer kind yeah, right. of thing. So now we're going to be adding a bit of a pre-highlight to the sword just to make sure we pick up all the areas of detail on that sword. I'm coming. I'm trying to come from the top down because it makes sense um, given the lighting and, and what we're doing here. There we go, that's gorgeous. I'm running out of various to hold the model. So again guys, if you have got any questions and you want to ask those in the uh, in the chat on the video, then please don't hesitate in asking. I'm more than happy to answer those about Series D uh, and any aspects of the, the technique that comes with it or the range of brushes. Don't forget the underside. Yeah. It's in shadow, it's fine. Yeah, it's in shadow. Might end up. Fully in shadow. Um, okay, so what we're going to do here is we're going to we're going to pick this is kind of like a. It's not power swordy. It's, it's kind of emulating metal. So this dips in a little bit. So if this, and hold it under the lamp for a second. Oh. So if this was dipped in, the light would be concentrating in the middle. Yeah. Okay. So I'll have it brighter in the middle and darker towards the edges. Yeah, yeah. All right. Then. I'm going to pre-highlight this before we put anything else on it. Um, so for those of you new joining the live stream, this video is completely done with uh, dry brushes with Series D. Uh, it's been We started it this morning and currently we are at 2 hours and 29 minutes of working Lovely time uh, on the model. We have also left that running while we've been yakking yeah, a few times. So. there is that. So maybe a little bit less. Uh, Irash Imodi, I can't pronounce that, but how are you? Where are you from? Thanks for joining the live stream. Right, so if it's bright on this bit, I want it to be bright on right, opposites, these yeah. bits and the opposites and on the bottom. The facet, yeah, and then do the top half of the point as well. Ooh, that's quite precise. Biggest issue with this is getting it in the recesses. If this was a flat sword, it'd be fine, but we've got yeah. pock marks here, so... Yeah, it's because it's a textured, might, it's a textured up, object as well. You're going to get to see us make some mistakes live here, possibly. Yeah. Um... Things may be a bit like normal and it might be easier if I just have a mid-tone and then work down and up. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Always, I, I prefer either starting bright or starting with a mid-tone. Hey, Fire Miniature Painter, how are you? Uh, thank you for joining the stream, appreciate it. I um, hope you're well and hope you... Uh, I don't know if you've caught any of the previous live videos we've done today. Let us know if you have. If you've, if this is the second or third uh, time you've seen us, then please let us know. If it's the first time watching us, uh, then, uh, then let us know as well, just so we know where you're from. Right, I think I'm just going to have to stipple this entire thing with um, yeah. this blue. I'll try and do the best camera work that I physically can. But uh... So I'm 
it's stippling. I don't want it in all the recesses though, so I am still holding direction in mind. So just to the dampening pad and then to the texture palette, just to take off the excess and work it into the bristles a little bit. Take off the excess and then apply to the model. Let's just try and change the angle so I can see. And we're just stippling that on. And this is a bit of a base layer just to really add that sort of mid-tone on the sword. Back into the dampening pad, out onto the dry palette, uh, sorry, texture palette. All right, so make sure we get all of this as well. I'm trying not to get its hand. Someone's asking how much for you to paint all of their models. <laughs> <laughs> Is it three great unclean ones? <laughs> Is it three great unclean ones? If it's a congregation of filth, then I might just paint it for me because I'm liking this. <laughs> We've only got two to do now, so... <laughs> yeah. One day, six hours done. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, could, I reckon if I was doing all the same stages at once, it'd get less, it'd get less enjoyable, but... One day we will paint an entire army in a day on the stream between me and James as well. Yeah. I think that would make for pretty decent content. You could watch us go slowly mad. Yeah. So, uh, Chris Danish, thanks for joining us on the uh, live stream. Really appreciate that. First time today, so thank you. Uh, right, so the cleaning of the brushes, uh, I don't know how much you've caught of it or if you've just joined, but if you've just joined, then essentially we've got uh, the Series D dampening pad, which is there, and obviously a texture or a dry, a texture palette, which is this piece of uh, plastic card, which has got 10 years worth of paint built up on it. Uh, that's the texture that you can see. Um, what we are going to be doing is we're going to be giving you guys an add-on choice of uh, a, a sort of texture palette that's going to come with uh, you know your, the Series D sets if you choose to add it onto your set. Here's one of them with a really cool cityscape um, and that fits into the into the case really nicely. Uh, no, no, don't worry about it making us go over it again. It's, that's, this is what these videos are for. So um, the, the brushes themselves actually clean as you're using them because the dry brushing technique you, you do... Get to see that on this one yeah, you get to see it in a second. But you do, you do remove um, paint from the brush as you're using it. But the, um, the whole purpose of the dampening pad is to a, you add a bit of moisture to the, to the to the brushes as you're using them. Okay, not to white with these highlights. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which which gives you um, which gives you a, a, a much smoother, softer finish when you're actually using it. Um, it mitigates friction on the surface of the model as well. And one thing you'll find with the Series D is that you don't need to use it as heavy-handed. Um, a lot of the guys, you know, David Soper, Rich Gray, uh, Ankel, a lot of the guys that have, have been sort of tried uh, Series D out. Uh, a lot of the comments are that you know it's surprising how the muscle memory is, yeah, is that you know it. how much of a softer touch you actually need to use for, for, for when using Series D. Uh, and that's because of the that's because of the the softer hair that we've we've used and the, the, you know in the heads of the brushes themselves but as you use the brushes on um on the texture palette and also increase add a bit of moisture to it the, the paint does remove itself from the brushes and then once you've done that and they do go back to nearly being clean you then finish like a session just by cleaning the brushes using brush yeah. soap and um and obviously, obviously here we're using very strong blues but just just throughout the process of of stippling on we're kind of removing them beautifully yeah all right so let's add some more white to our mix now line of it on the palette there take our super blue uh Rashid Mondi, uh, the, the brushes themselves, uh, the, the, t the dampening pad is a little bit of moisture. It's literally like one drop. So, so you put a brush, like literally like that, and then enough. and then drop that into the dampening pad, and, and it will, it yeah. There. And then you can start using the brush. We're, when we say you know adding moisture to the the, te the to to the, the brush, we're not like wetting it. It's not like a wetting that we're doing. Okay. So all Byron's doing here is just stippling on the brighter areas of colour uh, against the mid tone, so we can start when we do the start doing essentially a bit of blend in using the dry brushes um, those areas or those segments are defined this is kind of what we were talking about painting flat areas yeah much like on Mr. Redemptor over here so if I just show you guys this Redemptor that was I don't know if any of you caught our uh, our live stream on Facebook last night we had some audio problems but um but yeah, so if you look at those flat panels there, they've got lovely blends in them and transitions, uh, and that's all done just with Series D and a bit of sort of the, the moisture that's included into it. And the other thing, as you can see, is you can see how smooth that finish is. If you just, if I just that's get buffed, yeah, yeah. It? yeah. So if I just get circular dry brush massage, exactly. <laughs> yeah, I don't think we should be condoning massage. <laughs> that's that's that? said it's going to yeah. be allowed. But um, but yeah, no, Chris, uh, not a problem at all. I hope that um, I hope that explanation and that uh, answers your question. 
um Limberius, thank you so much really appreciate that i hope you do like what you're watching uh, again so bonus just doing a bit of stippling here to add the areas of color to that sword and break up that solid mid tone doing traditional dry brushing yep on the uh on the skull bits but um yeah we are we're stippling these bits Are we going to keep this video to under an hour? Is there a reason why? Uh, no, it will, it, will, um, it will give us a countdown. When it goes over an hour, I think it's over a certain period of time, it will give us a countdown of how much time we've got. If we can start a new one again... What is it that it. allows us to save it? We... I don't know. It, will tell, it might tell me at the end. We'll if any look. of you in, guys are Instagram pros, we would like these videos to be available to everyone afterwards. So if you know how we can do that, please let, let, let us, us know, know. <laughs> because we're Luddites. <laughs> Very miniature painter, you've never used a dry brush. Oh, okay. Well, you you will love these. Uh, it's a completely new technique for you on? to explore. I know that's uh, heretical. <laughs> start with ours, and then everything will feel awful afterwards. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, but these are these are lovely. Uh, you know what we've created. Obviously, we're a little bit biased, but we've we, we created them. Biased, <laughs> we created them I mean, too. We're doing an all right job here in yeah. a pretty. Uh, pretty stupendously tight time deadlines so. yeah so what we at two hours and 37 minutes of working time obviously we stopped that to have a bit of lunch um but uh but yeah yeah no no like blue peter here's one we made earlier here. no this, this is, is all been all done. done and you can see the photos you know the, the different little video sections on our instagram from when we started this morning to to where it's at now um but yeah uh Dalek, glad you like the uh the redemptor and those armor panels look mega yeah so thank you ever so much for your kind words um Minish paint services are the only particular brands of acrylic paints that you would avoid using with the brushes. Nope, everything um, is fine. Um, if there's any paints that are particularly um, gloopy thick, not like some paints just have a high viscosity, um, but if there's any which are really, really gloopy thick, they're going to give you more issues. You just have to dilute them more. But um, no, everything is everything is good to go. You just dilute it more or less and remove more or less on the brush itself. Right, I'm getting to the stage where I want my brush to do more white, and um, because it's got blue on it... We have to do a bit of a clean. Uh, yeah, I'm removing a bit more on the back of my hand and stuff. Let's see how this goes. So I'm not going to edge highlight yet because um, I want to work on the contrast of the darker areas of the blade. Um, so we'll get everything with edge highlights with some very, very careful gentle dry brushing later but we've kind of built up to a decent level of kind of ambient glow there vibrancy yeah you guys might notice that i've, I've ignored the back of the sword i have <laughs> <laughs> one side's enough just for the, the, the there's no clever answer there i have <laughs> all right okay and i am going to hop to a smaller brush too which hopefully we've got to hand because we had to clean all of our brushes after we turned them all bright green <laughs> <laughs> a couple of hours ago. Some of them they're still drying being pointed. Yeah, if you've got any questions guys, feel free to ask. Uh, let us know let us know where you're from because it's always interesting to know where people are watching the stream from uh, as well as well. Right, wicked, let's jump T. I'm just gonna remove remove a lot of the excess I've got here. So again, using the texture palette here just to remove the excess from the brush and using the dampening pad just to add a little bit of moisture in there to aid that paint release. Always twisting it around. We use, we're using our brush from every angle. We clean it from every angle. We test it from every angle. Yeah, That's one of the beauties of using, uh, you know, with Susie, the shape of the head obviously being round. Uh, it allows you to attack a target from That's any angle. brutal, brutal blue paint in it and is actually doing very, very well considering. Yeah. No soap used on that yet either. No, so. and when you do use the soap, it will release a lot of, uh, a lot of paint from the brush anyway. Right, next, so what size is this? This is a medium? medium. Yeah, so we've got a medium brush now. Just add a little bit of moisture to the brush. Taking off. commenting on it, but that, that thing is, uh, is drying out at like three times normal pace. Yeah, it's quite warm, the balmy it? UK weather. Yeah. Right, going for pure white hair. So now just a little bit of stippling and movement of colour just to place those bright areas on the blade. I do know where the Faroe Islands is, but uh, it's amazing that you're checking in from there. So that thank you, brilliant. thank you ever so much. So this, um, we've spoken about using other techniques. This would definitely benefit from a bit of a wash because of the kind of the pockmarked blade. Yeah, uh, it'd help it help things pull in the recesses. We cannot do that. It's one of the few things not open to us with dry brushing. Yeah, it's 
far as texture painting goes. We can, however, beautifully, hopefully, can catch this. It goes yeah, edges really nicely as well. We can pick out the bottom, the bottom lips of the puck marks. Okay, that's starting to look pretty tasty now. Yeah. Um, I want to make it darker though. So this is a it's a good tip for painting in general. Actually, rather than always going lighter, 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 lighter with your highlights, you can make something look like it's brighter just by making the dark bits of it darker. So that's what we'll be doing as the next step after we've done this one. Again, hitting those pop marks. If we're going to have Games Workshop's got this gorgeous texture, we're going to use every single millimeter of it. Right, looking pretty tasty. Time for us to make this blade look. We're going to make this section look brighter by making this section look darker and this section look darker. I'm going to use a baby brush. This is the um, the smudging that I've mentioned a couple of times throughout the video. Um, particularly doable with paints with high pigment, but a bit of transparency. Um, and this is you know, this is a, this is a carefully carefully bit. So. Adeptus Paintanicus, firstly, good name, and <laughs> secondly, um, the idea for the brushes, it's actually got five years worth of uh, development behind it. Uh, Byron started this five years ago uh, to create a range of dry brushes which, you know, uh, lived, up to the yeah, lived up to the technique. And the thing is, a lot of people do see do see dry brushing as an inferior technique, which it really isn't. Um, you know, it's it's a technique like any other which has its uses and its applications and can be done correctly and can be done badly uh, like any other um so it's just it's just something that we wanted this is the whole purpose of another purpose of d as well is to re is to, to really get rid of that stigma and sh and you know showing the smooth blends and smooth finish that you can get with with the using the damping pad and the texture palette um kind of mitigates and gets rid of that sort of stigma anyone which is what who we follows want. bohan then they know they know what you can do with dry brushing what what that guy can do in a ridiculously short amount of time um, is is beautiful and is completely humbling to see actually. Yeah. Uh, Tom, uh, not a silly question at all, so don't 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 worry about that. Uh, the uh, Citadel dry paints are actually quite good for using this as well because they 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 don't go onto the brush maybe as much as maybe other acrylic paints, and they do remove from the brushes quite easily as well. Yeah, they do. They're better so, for the edging stages. Yeah, I would say, and then for the kind of your final kind of highlighting stages. Yeah, yeah. exactly. I'd bring those in later on in the process. But because they are a little bit drier in the way that they are, um, perhaps I haven't, we haven't used them. Maybe something we should try in a video yeah, or something. But um, but um, we should just try so maybe to see how adding a little bit of um, a little bit of moisture will sort of make them work. Oh, we have a problem. We've gone to dark here, but that goes to dark also. Yeah. So you're gonna have to do that night. In the middle. Yeah. That'd be light. Yeah. That's okay. gonna be light. Yeah. Okay. Will there be instructions uh, on technique uh, for using in the Kickstarter? The, the boxes will come with care instructions, the brushes, and will also have uh, instructions on the technique as well. Yeah, video is, is the best medium if you're not with Yeah, but we, we will be doing videos on it. So we've got one minute and 42 seconds remaining on this live stream, but we'll probably come back on for a little bit more. We um, will, because this is looking pretty, pretty legit, actually. So if you've got any questions before this live stream finishes, uh, chuck them in now and we'll answer them as quickly as we can in the minute and a half we've got left. Uh, yes, uh, we will be at UK Games Expo, so we'll have a stand at UK Games Expo. If you're going to be there, make sure you drop by. And do you know what date that is off the top of my head? Do you know what? I really should know the dates, mm. but I can't remember off the top of my head. But if anyone knows the dates, chuck them in the comments. Yeah. Uh, we will be there with a stand, uh, so do come by and check out all the ranges of brushes. We've got Series D there, obviously Series M and Series S, so you can come and check those out there as well. Um, but we, if you're going to be there, we'll come drop by and come and say hello. We'll gladly have a chat with you, do a demo, and show you all those bits and bobs. So we've got under a minute left uh, on this. It's looking, uh, it's looking really mega. Decent, yeah, actually. It's looking um, really, really good. What we'll do is I'm going to save until our next live stream to dump in some black into this mix because I think people probably need to see how interesting it is when you are dry brushing with black. Yeah, it's pretty commonly done thing. Guys, we're going to wrap up and then we're going to come back. Uh, oh, 31st of May to the 2nd of June. Thanks, Thank you ATO, much. 40K. Um, yeah, so we'll come back ever so shortly in a minute. Uh, so if the, if the stream's going to end, then we'll jump right back and uh, and we can go from there. Okay. Uh, brush Adept, thanks so much. Uh, he, he loved your brush demo at Adepticon and oh, uh, loved the 
fantastic service well. as well. So yeah, Amazing. brilliant. Thanks so much, Rush. I really appreciate it. We'll, um, we'll be back ever so shortly in a couple of seconds uh, just to carry on with this model. See you guys back in a second. So we're back. Uh, sorry about that. We just wanted to make sure we could carry on with it and the time was running up, running up. Um, so we're just going to be adding some extra bits and bobs to that. Yeah, hi again. <laughs> yeah, sorry to do that. so long. It's just because it ran out of time. It was counting us down. So we thought we'd, uh, we'd just end it and then come back, basically. Um, and hopefully it will make a lot of other people aware that we're uh, back on. So we're just choosing some colours. We're going to add some colour to the sword and darken yeah, some areas. Black. Actually, so this is something that people probably... Are, uh, are not used to seeing but we want to make our bright bits look bright so we're going to make our dark bits look dark because it does the same thing daniel hi primitive paint shop hi all right so if you have a look at the palette here james i'm trying to show people how delicate this process is so i'm dragging some blue over here taking a micro dot of black oh my god black is black and i'm putting them together take a bit of moisture pick a light area because i want to see how this is going to behave yeah and I'm looking for something that's very, very soft. I'm going to test it somewhere on my skin now. There we go. Kind of a, yeah, dark base. Yeah. Yeah. And we're going to be very carefully pushing this. So what we're doing is darkening some of the darkest points on the sword as well. I'm going to have to yeah, move over here. That's a difficult uh, angle. For all the guys that are joining the live stream, we've been doing several of these today. Uh, so just to show you the progress of painting this model, we're currently at two hours and 48 minutes of working time on the model. So everything you see has been done today in that time frame, and it's, it's all been done using Series D. So everything that you can see on the model is being done with Series D. Um, if you do have any questions, feel free to ask. Uh, uh, Vitev009, thank you so much for backing the rushes. Really appreciate it ever so much. I appreciate this. Yeah, so we're just going to dampen the pad a bit more, a tiny bit of water from using the handle, put it in the pad, and it just dampens it ever slightly, maybe a little bit more. Just put that back in so it dampens it slightly. And then uh, we use that, take off the excess and mix the moisture into the brushes, as you can see there. So we're just taking a little bit of black, adding it into the blue just to darken some of it. Using it, on the, using it on the using it on the on uh, the texture palette just to see how it will finish and how the result will be uh, on the uh, surface this of the model. This is wetter than I'd normally have on the brush, but I am. I am it's kind of like glazing what you're doing now, yeah, essentially. And we're only hitting the areas that we want to be the very dark. darkest. Yeah, which is great. Sword looks mega. And we are we are caressing this. This is like <laughs> a gentle. <laughs> James doesn't like my use of words there, but we are we are gently, gently, gently stroking this. Yeah. So if you've got any questions, guys, feel free to ask. Uh, I know a lot of you perhaps have seen the other streams and have heard a lot of the questions being answered, but uh, we want to do quite a few of these live streams so people can um, people can obviously see how Series D works, the technique that comes with it, and uh, see how smooth um, how smooth the uh, the dry brushing is that we achieve using the range of brushes. Uh, how to clean between colours. Uh, so we as you as you're we... using the brush actually gets rid of a lot of paint off, of it, off of it. Do you mean between colours within um, within working from dark to light or do you mean like between two completely separate colours like so between the green bit and between the blue bit because there's two, there's two very different answers yeah, to that. Yeah, let question. us know exactly what you mean and we can answer it as best as physically possible. Um, if that's this cool. black is doing some wonders here so we can see this contrast we've got working on. Hi Bamboo, good to see you again. In fact, there's okay. a yeah, there that I've forgotten to darken. All right, that's looking pretty cool right now. To purge an existing palette of existing colour. Okay, um, it's a proper full clean. Um, we've got a couple of videos up which will show that. I will, I'll show that a little bit on this brush um, now. But basically, um, the process of going back to the palette. So we've had black on this brush, which is the worst colour we could possibly pick, um, apart from Holger Blue, and. Um, it's not exiting paint much at all anymore. And the reason for that is because we keep going back to this palette here for moisture to help paint exit the brush rather than just plowing more and more and, and more brush into it, yeah. Into the brush. So bearing in mind this has had this has had black and the strongest blue in the world on it. So you can see that you can see how it is cleaning itself. It's starting using to it. exit it yeah. from the brush pretty nicely. Um I'll I may as well clean this brush now. Um and we can grab another Yeah, that's fine. Uh so let's go through. So you, you so you, AOT 40k, you're doing some blues to white something, do you? don't want to swap to Metallica. Metallica, yeah, I don't think you can put Metallica on your brush, I was going to say. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> but I know what you mean, yeah, that's fine. That's okay. Um, paint something, 
been painting uh, back to painting after more or less 20 years uh, with Series S. Thanks so much. Uh, That's simply amazed amazing. by how That's things improved. That's a great thing to join the hobby because paints and Brushes. products and models have never been ever been as amazing better. as they are now. Yeah. They're so good. So, uh, so then, we'll just go here. So some brush soap, let's get that to focus. There we go. Uh, so as you can see, that just helps just to remove a lot of paint from. We're from always the brush. going from metal to tip. Yeah, we never we never abrasively trying to take the paint out. Uh, even though the technique, as we mentioned, uh, gets rid of quite a bit of, of of paint from from the brush as you're using it in combination with the texture palette and also the dampening pads. Uh, doing a full clean and just using brush soap and obviously putting brush soap. Draw it to be pointed. Yeah. Though. Yeah, so now the brush will be left to, uh, on the side to be, to remain pointed, uh, and then we do a full clean as well. Um, so that's that. Uh, Suze Green, thanks so much. Glad we're inspiring you. I hope you do like uh, what you see, and was, which is cool. Um, great on clean one in some white paint. Artie's asking, how soon can I? How can, soon can I start using it? Do I need to wait for it to completely dry after you've uh, cleaned it and you set it? You do have to wait oh, for yeah, it to completely yeah. completely dry. Otherwise, you'll have horrible surprise uh, bad times. Yeah. <laughs> so always, uh, we actually got a few over here just so you can see that are drying at present. If you're going to be extreme about it and you're painting on like an army level, um, then you could maybe rotate two sets. Um, obviously, both of those sets would last twice as long if you were using them for half the time. Yeah. Um, and that's. If I was going to be, I mean, this is a big model, but we've, we've chosen an extreme example here, but um, that's perhaps what I would do if I was painting in that manner. So we're starting now with our edge highlights. This is going to be very First much yeah. gently, gently. Um, we do not want to cover over those dark black areas, and in fact, we may end up going and smudging them in. Dry brushing is a back and forth organic technique, as I've said a lot of times in these videos. Like it's, you don't go from one, two, three, four, five. You go from one to three to five, jump back to four, backwards and forwards. Um, Until you get it exactly right yeah. how you want it. Yeah. I need to... And don't, don't forget, guys, obviously we're, we're doing the whole model with Series D. So we're, we're using D, D essentially on the whole model. But the reality is, is that it is, you know, a technique which gets us to a point and then we could go in and glaze areas darker and things yeah. like that. Um, but it's a very good tool, as you can see, for getting those lovely smooth finished layers on there. Um, and quick. then obviously you can... And it's quick as well, which is one of the important things. Um, so just added a little bit of moisture to the brush and then we're just using the texture palette to just combine some colours and see how they behave on the texture palette because as, as we mentioned it behaves very similar so I'll, go to, I'll go to a darker area of the palette see how the highlight this works on it yeah and I suppose that's the beauty of having the other colours um, on, on the texture palette that when you perhaps do need to do some highlighting you can just test it on a, maybe a darker patch or things like oh, that exactly, as well yeah. Do you need to clean it when switching between blue uh, to metallics, or does the fact that metallics are pigment as? Uh, oh, you'd be uh, fine with that, as, I reckon. Yeah. Unless, unless you really wanted an absolutely crisp, unnuanced silver. I like my silvers with blue, as you can see with the NMM we're doing. Um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't worry about that personally at all. Yeah. He's asking, or oh, will you get bleed into the next colours? I don't think you would get bleed. Depends. Because... If you're going from a fist on red to white, then you're going to end up Candy Mountain pink. That yeah. is like <laughs> that is completely unavoidable. Um, but a lot of colours, uh, you'll barely get any bleed through unless it's an example that's that extreme. So like a, like a blue through to a yellow, you'd end up turning that yellow green if it was a very strong blue. If it wasn't a strong blue, you probably wouldn't have to worry about it because there's so little left on the brush. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, uh, okay, Knights 112, thanks so much. Uh, I'm glad uh, that you uh, like what you've seen. Yeah, the entire model has been done with a dry brush today. Uh, I've, I've, if you've just joined, we've been working on the model today for working time of two hours and 55 minutes. Uh, but this is just so you guys can see what you can do with Series D in a very sort of limited time frame. Um, uh, John Five Snow, the set is uh, on Kickstarter now. So if you go on Kickstarter, I believe it's forty nine directly on Kickstarter. Yeah. For us, for a single pledge, there's a double uh, double set pledge as well. If you want to have a look at that, um, but the link on our Instagram when you go onto our Instagram will take you to the Kickstarter that has obviously loads of videos, updates, and bits and bobs on there for you to check out and uh, and have a look at the uh, the different options available. Uh, there's going to be a lot of add-ons and things that we're adding over the next uh, eighteen days as well. So do stick around to keep an eye out for those. I to a big softy here because I like how these edge highlight more than the smaller brushes. Um, that they, they they kind of do a, a bigger, softer global um, effect. You can see that it's literally picking out ridges in my skin. Yeah. Um, so we're using that magic here to get nice sharp crisp edges. I reckon that sword's pretty decent. Yeah, it looks mega. So there we go, let's have a look at the sword and where it's at now. Devastatingly, when we photo him from the front, I am going to have to paint the back. But we'll, we'll, 
we'll do that. We'll just take a photo from the different angle. Yeah. No. <laughs> oh, well, never mind. We'll do that later. So, yeah. um, I'll jump to its horns now, I reckon. Yeah, let's do a bit more work on the horns. Okay, um, light at the base, dark at the tips. Correct, yes. Okay. Uh, you can see I've, I had white on my brush and we're going lighter anyway, so I'm just using the horns and their texture to remove the brush. We keep being asked about cleaning, that's absolutely fine, and we keep saying about cleaning, cleaning and painting are the same thing. So, see these horns, I'm pre-highlighting them now, they're getting lighter towards the tip. And that's taking the excess from the brush. Yeah, it's got a little yeah. bit of blue in it, but that's that's doing work that we were going to do anyway, or it's doing work that's going to go underneath other colours and make them look um, make them look better, so... That might be a bit too close, I think. Yeah, it's gonna be... Do you let us know if anything is or isn't in focus, guys, we'll yeah. do our best. For those of you that are joining the stream just recently, uh, any questions you may have about Series D uh, or anything that we're doing uh, cool. with the model, then please do let us know. We're more than happy to sort of answer those questions for you. Again, the whole model has been done with uh, Series D dry brushes, uh, just to show you what you really can do with them. Uh, and give you an idea to of sort of the textures and things you can create and uh, how softly, the, softly. softly the blends you can get as well. Uh, but overall, as we said, it's to get a really smooth, smooth finish on the model uh, so that you can see, obviously, the quality of the result that you get with the brushes. If you've got any questions, please do ask. People can probably, like, if we can get close to his, his face and those horns there, that's the idea of how soft we can get. Yeah. This is working really well, actually. I'll yeah. try and keep it close so you can just see exactly Right, so what I'm going to do here is the entire horn is going to be brushed uh, lightly and then going to work my way to darker colours down it. So I'm working from light to dark. Um, sometimes it's easier to shade to, from light to dark uh, like with airbrushing, with, with normal painting, with glazing, whatever. So that is, that's how I'm going to be approaching it here. Um, I want to use as big a brush as possible, um, but I might have to step to a smaller one at some point too. Uh, I'm going to use the bone colour we've already used. So the same technique we done on the sword, you could essentially do on those chains as well. Thanks, oh, Ken. 100%. Really appreciate that. Glad you like what you see. Yeah, one hundred percent. That's that's great. Okay. So leaving the base, working my way down the tips. Softly. Any more questions coming in? Yeah, someone's just asked about the XL brush as an add-on on the Kickstarter. There's an option to pledge for it. The, um, the uh, XL brush is an add-on. So when you go and pledge, the amount you need to pledge is obviously the amount for the set plus the amount for the add-on. So the XL is 1350. Is uh, so you just need to add 1350 to the 49 if you're getting one uh, standard set. And then obviously that total is the amount that you pledge. And then when the uh, pledge manager is, uh, is, a, is open for that, you then can select your options. And add your shipping. Yeah, and add your shipping on there as well uh, so that's basically it but just yeah the pledge amount you just uh, essentially create 49 plus the 1350 uh, and uh, the shipping costs all right so we've got the bone layer now pretty pleased with that are we going to work through browns or yeah. are we just uh, or do you want to turn that I've done that again doing double tap in the screen do we want to nuance it through a bit of blue uh i don't know i think i think just go for the browns to the black i think i think warm brown uh, yeah warm brown yeah okay. yeah Right. Yeah, so for those of you new to joining the stream, uh, this is a completely dry brush model using Series D, which is our uh, new dry brush range. Uh, it's on Kickstarter currently, so if you just head to the link on the Kickstarter, you can find uh, that and it will take you to the Kickstarter. We've done the sword uh, just recently on the other side, and we're now working on the horns uh, to go from a light to a dark on those horns and add that sort of contrast on there. Uh, Viv, Tev, no problem at all. I hope that made sense. And any issues or anything, just ask us or drop us a message and we'll gladly help you with that. Um, so yeah, it's just working on the horns. I remember doing the brown stage on them now. We're just going to start adding some brown on there. Incidentally, brown and bone often makes really, really nice flash colours. Yeah. 
I'm glad you like the brushes. Uh, they, we, we ship internationally, so there shouldn't be too much of an issue to get them in Brazil. Uh, yeah. If you, if you know, if you go on to wait for a bit longer. Yeah, the, I think the shipping times just take a little bit longer. But uh, but feel free to just jump on there and pick up a set, and uh, they'll still get to you. Like uh, it might take a little bit longer than normal. Again, if you've got any questions, feel free to ask. We're more than happy to answer them about Series D or any of the aspects of the Kickstarter or models. For those of you guys that you know are interested in different models, if there's any models you think or any companies that produce models, bus that we should work with, uh, drop us a message or put it in the comments and we'll gladly have a look at those. We've got quite a few companies uh, that are going to be announced over the next uh, 18 days or so um, that we're going to be working with. We've got something beautiful from... Um red piano which is already in the uh, campaign it's the kind of i think he's called the stranger or something he's uh the really so, yeah. really haunting model that um bogan has painted bamboo uh yeah you can so so we need to do is on your pledge the pledge that you've made if you've made the pledge at 49 then all you need to do is just amend it and add to it the 1350 for the excel and then in pledge manager there'll be an option where you can then you add, allocate you, you allocate your funds to, to the options that you'd like um so that's essentially how it is but that's all you need to do i hope that makes sense but if you have any issues just obviously drop us a message and we'll, we'll help you with that um ken yeah i would say they are only available on kickstarter the general retail release won't be until at least end the, at the end of the year um so if you do want them uh, pledging is the way to get them uh, the september wave i think there's a couple of september left if memory serves correct uh, that's for september delivery but um jump on the kickstarter link and have a look and uh you can go from there it's really starting to build up the texture on these horns at uh, the moment we step to black that's going to be a very very noticeable change it's an obvious statement but that certainly will and then we will go to the base of them with a smaller brush and we're going to work uh, work back towards that white yeah. So we've just hit the three hour mark on working on the model, so you can see essentially where we're up to. Uh, and that's three hours of working time. We had a bit of a break, just had some lunch and stopped obviously the clock. Um, but this is where we're kind of up to now. All right, so time to introduce a little bit of moisture to the brush. Yeah, so we're just going to the carefully dampening pad and then just going to work in. Take a tiny bit of black. using the texture palette to take off the excess and also with the moisture to smooth it out a little bit. Yeah, we're, 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 we're testing how this is going to behave because black is scary. Yeah. House of Dessa, yeah, thank you ever so much. It is all done with dry brushing, so everything that you see on the model, on the photos that are on our Instagram, on the short videos that are on our Instagram, it's all done with... Um, it's all done just with dry brushing and Series D. Uh, so, yeah, so I'm glad you like the results. All right, this is quite a step up, this one. Yeah, so uh, FS Batali, uh, the um, the special care with shipping, um, our, our shipping options are listed on the Kickstarter, um, but obviously, uh, you know, international shipping takes a little bit longer, as we mentioned. Uh, as for other sets, yeah, Series S and Series M are going to be available uh, in the, the pledge manager at the end of the campaign as well, so you'll be able to add in sets of our other ranges of rushes, should you wish. Uh, Keith, good to see you. I uh, hope you're having a good day, dude. Um, thanks for joining the live video. I'll give you a little wave. <laughs> so there's just another shot of the sword, just so you guys can see the other sword that we just finished uh, a minute ago. We've just got to do the other side now. <laughs> it will look great. Yeah. If any of you got questions about Series D, I know I've said it quite a few times, but we really want to make sure we do answer any questions for you guys. Yeah, the videos are here for you guys to ask us questions about the brush range. Um, if you guys still also see what you can achieve with them in quite a minimal amount of time. He's looking great. So, having worked up to black, I'm going to take this, you can see that's a pretty sooty looking end. We're going to see if we can find somewhere on this model just to remove some of this that it, so yeah, those chains would be quite rusty, wouldn't they? So what we'll do is we'll go in and we'll... It's a, yeah, it's a decent place just to put down some texture. So um, using, the, using the texture of the brush, as we're adding a bit of moisture to it, and then using the brush on the surface of that texture, what's happening is uh, the excess paint is, is coming off the brush and it's actually helping, to the, helping with the cleaning of that brush. It'd normally be the base where I did this on the model. This guy's not on the base, so... No, but... 
So we're going to see a brush soon that's had black and brown on it. Yeah. And actually, through just from doing that, we've managed to pick up quite a lot. Oh, I will see. Paddled him in white. <laughs> it's okay. Um, hey, Jay. Is it Finny? No, it's not. It's another Jay. Another Jay. Another Jay. All right, so... Um, can so, yeah, now if we have a look at the brush head, just so you can see... So that's where the, the scraping we've been doing has been cleaning it. So this should get out to focus. So before, it was quite darker than that, and you it's could actually black. see the black that was on yeah. there. And now, through using the, the brush on the surface of the model, it's actually removed quite a... Um, quite a, uh, a large amount of it and this is before we add any brush soap in and start cleaning it at all whatsoever so we're just uh, taking a bit of moisture from a water pot and putting that on the palette uh, and then now we're using the texture palette with the texture that it's got to remove extra paint and you can see actually some of the brown that's coming off uh, from that brush on the palette there uh, and it's just aiding in the cleaning of the brush and removing of the uh, of the the of reason the... i put the water on the palette not dip the brush in is because it helps me not get water up to the ferrule of the brush. Yeah. If you get water up to the ferrule and you've got paint in the brush, then that can take paint up to the ferrule through capillary action as it works its way up the bristles. Yeah. So we get to avoid it by doing this. Uh, no, there are brushes for everything. They don't discriminate scenery or bases and models. Oh, but if you if scenery you if you want to, scenery is fantastic with them. So just to grab a couple of bits of scenery that we've got here that we've done previously. Uh, first up, we're going to do some uh, monochrome or black and white walls. Uh, so I'll just, just to show you that oh, one. show the brush first of all, so that you can see all the a lot has been worked out. And we're onto the blue that is from our earlier session. Yeah. So now you just continue, and this is before we use any brush soap on the brushes. So that actually using the brushes on the texture palette with a bit of moisture from the damping pad gets a lot of the. Uh, paint out so this is a monochrome wall uh, that was done uh, with series d and you can actually see all the light sourcing where it's brighter at the top darker at the bottom and it's all done uh, just with a brush uh, very similar stipple, yeah bottom to top stipple top to bottom with a light a color and then dry brush um dry brush with a, a mid-tone a highlight and a super highlight yeah. um mid-tone goes from here to here um highlight goes from here to here and then super highlight goes from here to here, just like you're with layering, you're covering less of the model. Yeah, and that gives you a lovely, lovely result, as you can see. And this is obviously just a black and white wall. Um, we also have the uh, super, super bright ghost wall or Harry Potter wall, um, as you can see, <laughs> um, which has had a similar technique, but obviously using different colours uh, to create this lovely, lovely vibrant. Might recognise the colours. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So there's that. So it works perfectly on scenery as well, guys. If you are interested in using scenery, um, let's have a look at what some people saying uh thanks for all the good new guys that have joined the stream really appreciate it uh, if you've got any questions about series d please feel free to um to ask uh, that we're more than happy to answer those um let's have a look what some people are saying uh, i don't know if it's a problem when they buy it but uh, if i'm pledge merge the brushes i have to pay 20 percent more than in the faroe islands uh, I don't know why that would be. I think it must be because of shipping, I'd imagine, or it says 25% more because of the fair islands. We'll have a look at that. We'll, uh, we'll have a look into that for yeah, you. Send us, uh, send us a message directly and we'll have a look at that. But it shouldn't be doing that. Uh, I'm not too sure why you're having that. Uh, but drop us a message directly and we'll take a look into that for you. Um, thanks for everyone who's watching, who's just joined. Uh, obviously, we're demonstrating Series D. The uh, great and clean one that you can see here has been done completely with Series D and dry brushes. Every just getting his highlights done. Yeah, everything that you see is done with uh, with Series D dry brushes. And uh, the total work time on the model, if I can just get the camera in, total work time on the model is three hours and nine minutes, as you can see there. So this is essentially what's been done in three hours' work. Really, really lovely, smooth finish on the model as well, which is nice. So what we're doing is adding uh, uh, the final sort of highlight stages to the horns now, aren't we? Yeah. Uh, and this combination of using the dampening pad uh, on the on the model and also the uh, texture palette as well. Yeah, testing it. There we go. That's good. It's given us a point of contrast, um, light to dark and desaturated to saturated on his head. I think that's, that's worked out really well, actually. We go from the back here, you can see that's not had the white stages yet, so it's looking a little more dull. So now we're going to go in and do that on there. Yeah, again, so you, this is a little bit more of an awkward angle. So, so Jay, the only thing that's very similar to uh, makeup brushes is actually the overall look of them. The, um, the, sh the look and the shape, essentially, the handle thickness and things like that. Everything else, there's five years worth of development behind Series D. Uh, there's been untold amounts of samples, and uh, the, the, how, the key things which make them different are how packed the hair is. Makeup right. brushes don't have such a packed head. Um, the type of hair itself. Yeah, and These our, are not synthetic. Uh, no. Um, synthetic loose fill is very common with makeup brushes. Yeah, so they are very, very different. But the reason they look so similar to makeup brushes is makeup brushes are made to be used in any direction. And um, I've no idea why 
uh, dry brushes in our industry are not made to be used in any direction because you're just limiting a technique and you're making brushes die quicker. Um, so that's that's two of the key traits of a of a round brush when you're using a physical painting technique. Yeah. Brilliant. So thanks for all you guys that are joining the live stream now. Really appreciate it. If you've got any questions, feel free to ask. So do you think we'll go any darker on those horns at the top? Or do you think... Do you like, I don't know. I think they're nice and subtle, actually. They're all right, actually, yeah. I don't think we'll go any lighter on them either. No. We're, we're pretty much there. That's brilliant. Bamboo, thanks so much for fixing that and uh, for picking up the XL as well. Really appreciate that. So uh, I'm glad. I'm sure you will find the the extra large one of a lot of use. Uh, it's great for for both bigger models like this and also for scenery as well. Base coating in general as well. That stipply coat. If you want to cover a model fast, it's absolutely excellent. I reckon that might that might actually. Is there any other bits on him that need doing in particular that a, a new technique? Uh, We've done the cloth, we've done the rust, yeah. we've done all the bits of sinew between the skin. That's the majority of the as big well. boy done. Um, so what we'll do now is we'll hop onto a should we do some ATST? Yeah, can do. Or you do the redemptor arm if you want. I'll yeah, do that. I'll do. Um, I'll show a, I'll show a black to white. Yeah, let's do that. So we're going to do uh, this redemptor. We're going to work on him. You may recognise him from last night's stream that had some audio <laughs> issues. Um, we're going to uh, be doing a bit of work on him now. So what are our, our light points are going to be light top where, of the shoulder, light yeah. here, dark here. Yeah. Or are we going to do light in the middle? What are we doing? Uh, light at the top. Do the natural lighting, yeah, so it just follows down the top of the armour panel. Okay. This brush has still got some stuff on it, so I'm just going to do a bit of this. These sections are quite cool, actually. Maybe we should do... A, let's see what we can do with the back panel. Yeah, let's do that. Okay. So... I'm going to see if I can just do this for black and white. Oh, that's blue. So I'm just going to quickly pre-highlight this to give us a rough idea of how it would look. I think this, all of this is going to get covered over. So there's not any massive reason to be, to be too delicate here. Um, I'm going to hit this as well, more at the top than we would do at the bottom. I just want to see if this effect is one that one that we're happy with, because we may as well show you something pretty. I can that look pretty decent, kind of something roughly like that. Yep. All right, so now we've decided what we're doing, use up what's on the brush, and I'm going to step to a bigger brush, because that's what I like for this type of stuff. It's like a super dry brush. <laughs> Fresh from Japan. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm actually also going to grab a grey because I'm making this a bit easier. I'm grabbing Eshin Grey, which is lovely. Eshin Grey is a completely non nuanced dark grey, and that, that sounds a bit boring, but it does great, great, great things. It's very predictable paint. So just following the natural volume to create a... Yeah, brighter towards the top of the spherical bit, and then this bit, I've picked it to be brighter on the um, the bit, kind of the, the sticky out bit. It's curving, you're shaking it. Yeah. Also not forgetting the, the top part of the model, which would of course be lighter. So for all you guys that are just joining the live stream, we've got quite a few of these that have gone up today. Uh, too close. That's fine. Hello, Mikey. How are you? I hope you're you well. Uh, it's just Mikey from Hellstorm. It's just uh, just joined the uh, the, uh, the Hello, Mikey. Feed. Um, if you've got any questions about Series D, about any of the um, uh, any uh, of the brushes or of the techniques or of how we use them, then feel free to uh, feel free to ask. Okay, so happy to I'll ask also get a flat well. panel to show people. So. Or a more flat panel. So this is just a stippling of the sort of underlayer to the to the yeah. brush in. It's important that there is a physical layer of texture before we go for anything. Stippling dries quite fast as well, which is another really nice part of the technique. 
Headspace painting, uh, it's w w water. We use uh, uh, the brush soap that comes with the sets and also actually while you're using the brush, you're actually cleaning it because you're removing paint, paint from, from, from the brush as you're using it, if that makes sense. Uh, so it's a combination of using the texture palette, which you can see here, and also using the dampening pad to reactivate any paint that's on the brush and then you're removing it as you're attacking texture with the brush. Um, so yeah. Right, so we're gonna start adding white in now. We've got Eshin Gray. This is Matt White from Army Painter. These are nice, clean, um, non-nuanced colours. I would quite like nuanced colours, but um, if you're just looking for a clean uh, black to white transition, these are really, really, really good. So now just stippling. Softly, softly. And that's one thing, I mean, we said it in quite a few of these live videos, that using the dry brushes is, is very different to how perhaps your muscle memory... Kind of people are probably seeing a really exaggerated... This is a very, very fast transition that we're getting here. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, you would use uh, you would use metallics. Uh, very similar. These are the, exactly the same. Exactly the same process. So you can see those super crisp edge highlights. You do not need a small brush. That's exactly it, Jay. It's essentially like it's. Well, it's you say dry blending, but there obviously is a bit of moisture involved with the process. But it is you can blend with them. If any of you uh, go check out Bohan, who recently worked with us uh, in the, the testing of the brushes, um, you will see that what he created in a very short space of time actually had an amazing amount of blending and oh, stippling involved. Transitions in it. everywhere. Headspace, glad you like the great unclean one. He's uh, he's been a pleasure to work on for the time we've been working it's an on him. Incredible model, it's really really good. We're not going to pick a bad one to demonstrate the technique, but he is literally one of the best we could think of. Right, we're, we're pretty light now, so we're being quite careful here. Jay, it's uh, Bohan. So if you go, just search for him. It's B O H U N. You'll find him on uh, on Instagram. He's an incredible painter from Poland. Uh, Has been for uh, like fifteen years. It's been an incredible painter. Mister Hollis, good afternoon. I hope Hello. you're well. <laughs> you've not been using too many of our brushes to spoon peanut butter. Yeah. <laughs> How's your painting going? For um, Golden Demon. For Golden Demon. Yeah. He's got a lot of time on his hands at the moment. So he's going to be steaming through. I hate to think what he can achieve with time on his hands when he's been squeezing evenings here and there and achieving what he has been achieving. Yeah. Glad to hear it's going well, Neil. If any of you do have questions about Series D, about the Kickstarter, about any aspects of the use of the brushes, the technique that's involved with them, uh, then please feel free to ask. You can see in the background loads of different uh, models which we've been using uh, the brushes on over the course of the last couple of weeks since their release. Uh, we're working with a lot of really cool miniature companies coming up on the Kickstarter over the next sort of 18, 17 odd days. So do check out all the sort of add-ons and updates that are going to be coming very soon. Uh, and for those of you that missed the beginning of uh, our earlier live stream, uh, the texture palette that you see uh, down on the table, obviously with all the various colours on it, is actually um, is actually a, 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 an A4 sheet of plastic card. Um, but what we're going to be doing as an add-on to Series D is uh, a range of uh, essentially texture palettes that have predetermined designs on them. Here's a nice cityscape one uh, that's going to be available very, very soon. It's the first chance we've had to show you guys these. And it's great for taking the excess paint off the brushes. You can see what Byron's doing here. Uh, and it helps you to clean the brushes and get them back to their natural state. Uh, and this is before you would go in with a bit more water and maybe brush soap to clean them. Um, so, but we've got various designs which are going to be coming very, very soon on the Kickstarter, so do uh, stick around for those. They're coming soon. Um, did a load of painting today. <laughs> You've been painting a set of garage doors. <laughs> not quite. So, not what we not quite. Hear. I hope you've not been using Series D on that. But <laughs> but um, but yeah. Some real nuance in there. 
Yeah. Um, so, uh, Stu, uh, what is there a package that contains everything, including the extra large brush and the texture palette? So, uh, the extra large brush is an add-on. So you get the, the you get the uh, you get the standard uh, the standard set, uh, and then uh, the uh, extra large is thirteen fifty pounds add-on. Uh, you include that, and then the, um, the texture palette will be an add-on as well, which you can just incorporate onto that. Yeah, we'll add that in a couple of days. Yeah, can we use Byron's? Mikey from Hellstorm would like your your, your texture palette. He's been using it for ten years, Mikey. Oh, so God. probably not. I think he might be a bit attached to it. Like, literally, if I if I arrive somewhere without my Byron TM texture palette here, I feel lost until I've primed a piece of plastic card black and then put down some texture on it with stippling. Yeah, because I don't know how to paint. Yeah, well, apparently Neil's been using Series S to paint his garage doors at home. So oh, uh, yeah, we'll see you in a couple of years. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so that's looking pretty. Yeah, that's how it goes to look cool okay it's really really good it's nice isn't it so this is black and white we could use that as a filter we could go in with other colors now and yeah in fact like why the hell not should we try something yeah let's you? try something let's just put some color on what nuance uh should we try pushing purple into it or uh, or like a rusty brown yeah or? we can do yeah we've already used purple on there but you can put whatever like it doesn't matter you know, any color will demonstrate the the lovely uh sort of uh, it's gonna get it's gonna get covered over anyway because we'll do all of this guy purple so that's a little bit of a play. Hi, Fleet Horror. You were the competition winner for Series S when we done the uh, Series S uh, Kickstarter. So I hope they're uh, you said they're still serving you well. Uh, I'm glad you're still using them, and uh, I'm glad. I hope you uh, can check out Series D and also Series M, which was recently on Kickstarter as well. Um, Things miniatures sold. Uh, yep. Yeah, well, I'm glad you like what you've seen. Uh, if any questions you may have, if anyone has got any questions, feel free to ask. We're more than happy to answer them. Um, we've got about another sort of 15 to 20 odd minutes of this stream left. So if you do want to ask any questions, please do so because we are more than happy to answer them. Um, we've had people come in day all, all through the day asking a lot of various questions. Uh, Jake, will there be any tutorial for these in, or a future tutorial weekends? If you actually go onto our YouTube channel, Jay, so just search Artisopus on YouTube, there is a 10 minute uh, tutorial video or video demonstrating how we painted this ATST uh, head. Um, it covers everything from the use of the brushes, how to use them, how to clean them, the use of the dampening pad that comes in the set and everything at all. And you can see all these lovely flat panels that have got transitions and sort of blended sort of transition glazes on them as well. So go check that out on our YouTube channel. That's also linked as well on the Kickstarter. So if you do go into update one in the updates, I believe you can uh, watch that video directly on Kickstarter as well. So all you're doing is going in and adding a bit of colour on that rear section of the Dreadnought now. Yeah, I'm just seeing how it looks with a little bit of uh, purpley blue in the recesses. And then to stick with our colours we've been using on absolutely everything, I'll see what happens if we put some, some green on the raised areas. Yeah. Yeah, Jay, it's not it's not a technique to sort of get rid of any other techniques. I wouldn't say. I think it's just you know it's giving you another technique which you so can really, you know yeah. you can add to your arsenal. arsenal isn't it? That's exactly it. Uh, yeah, and headspace. Yeah, we we're going to do various different tutorials with. There's a, there's quite a lot a long list uh, of things when it that that, that we want to do uh, on YouTube. Just so you guys have got like a, a an archive or a point of call for for looking after your brushes and for using them for different things. Is someone asking about weekend tutorials? Did they mean actual? Did they mean? Um... Potentially, yeah, yeah. It's something that we are something that we are looking into as well. There is something in the works uh, for for various different things of, of what we've been doing as well. So when it comes to dry brushing in forty k, uh, is it is using the colours recommended on the Games Workshop Paint App a good idea? Uh, the, yeah, the, the Paint App's fine. Yeah, it gives it gives you lots of good uh, direction for for the colours to use. Uh, but you know, as as a painter, I'd, I'd say you, like. you know, always experimenting is always good. So uh, so definitely definitely experiment with colour because we will learn a lot from using the different colours and experimenting. One with thing them. that I'd say that's possibly particularly relevant to that is that. Dry brushing can end up with desaturated paints quite easily and Games Workshop, um, they don't have as many crazy saturated paints um, or fluorescent colours, so we found them particularly useful. That's how part of how we're managing to achieve these these kind of crazy techniques that we've shown on the Great Unclean one and stuff like that, is that we've jumped to um we, we've jumped to fluorescent paints or we've used really really saturated purples or blues uh, we've been using zero purple which is great but um we've also been introducing hold your blue from uh, scale colors fancy games um in shadows and 
if you want to you want to keep that color um like we've added lemon yellow and stuff like that it's a lot of it is about picking colors that even when they're used in dry brushing which is kind of a um it lends itself very well to like pastel painting um you're still picking colors that are going to going to inject some saturation into the process so it's just yem, le, uh, yellow lemon oh, i can't speak it's le le lemon. Le lemon yeah <laughs> lemon yellow the way i did on there yeah, so we're going to do this for about another 10 minutes or so, guys. Uh, so if you do have any questions, feel free to ask. Um, again, we just want to make sure that you uh, sort of get full update on how to use Series D, its benefits of using it, the, the texture palette, the damping pad, uh, any questions about the brushes at all whatsoever. Uh, no problem at all, Simon. Uh, if you do have any more, feel free to ask. I hope all the videos throughout the day uh, and the sort of steps that we've taken have uh, made sense to you guys. And uh, if there is anything in the last 10 minutes or so that you would like to ask, feel free to. Um, we're going to be finishing around about 20 past today. I jumped to a big bush. Cool, yeah, Jago, have a look at them. They're, the link is at the top of our Kickstarter, so you can just jump on there and have a look. And, uh, it takes you to the uh, Kickstarter campaign, so you can find out all the information you need to about the brush range and also uh, any of the options that you choose. See you later, Jay. Take care of yourself. So for you guys that have just joined the stream, that's Edmund uh, and also Yo Soy I'm Freak. Uh, if you want to ask any questions, yeah, I know. if you want to ask any questions, uh, feel free to ask uh, about about obviously the brushes. Um, but I hope you all have enjoyed what you've seen uh, and the Great Unclean. We'll probably finish up with a little recap on the Great Unclean one. Yeah, just absolutely. have a look, have a look at him, uh, so you guys can see him, and we'll take some photos just before the end of the day. Just going to clean my brushes off on this model, and that'll be a good opportunity to show kind of what you could do if you wanted to just pick out extreme edges. So if you were working with a silver on top of a really dark silver here and you wanted this to all look like very, very um, dark uh, machinery, this would be a great way to do it super fast. You could be using metallic paints here, you could be using non-metallic. Yeah, absolutely fine. So you can see that obviously using the brush to, to get rid a bit of the uh, excess on the brush, you're not actually damaging the brush or anything like that because we aren't being so heavy handed with it. It's quite quite soft in the way that it's actually you know working on the, on the surface of the model and it's picking up those details really, really nicely, um, which is really cool. That's just what we ended up, we ended up painting this, this guy's yeah, chest plate by accident yeah. basically. Just using it to sort of take off the excess while you're doing all the shoulders and everything. Yeah, exactly. Cool. So should we, yeah, should let's we show the big guy? Let's finish up with the uh... So that's the big guy. Uh we've had great fun on him. Um we've got to stop the clock, but that's about three hours work start to finish there. Yeah. Um and he's looking fantastic. Super striking. We said we'd probably end up sitting him on like an orangey base. Kind yeah, of like yeah, like a kind brown of orange and the, the rust we've got down here. Um if we were going to go in with non-dry brushing, things like just picking out these skulls here for a nice point of contrast um, and maybe pushing a couple of washes into the recesses could really push our contrast even further. Um, maybe a tiny bit of glazing here, although we've yeah. pretty much managed to achieve that with yeah. the dry brushes alone, which I'm quite pleased with. Um, and then picking out of some boils and stuff like that. Yeah, uh, we've actually got a Spanish guy in the chat as well. <laughs> good. Um, had three hours at work. Yeah, three hours uh, has been done. I think it's three hours twenty six. Um, we left it running for just. We left it running a little bit, minutes fifteen minutes or so. Still. But uh, but there you can see obviously what he looks like. I uh, hope you guys have enjoyed uh, the streams today. Uh, thanks so much for sticking with us, asking questions, and for following the progress of this great unclean one as well. Uh, the Kickstarter is on for another 18, 17 ish days, so feel free to jump, dive on there and have a look. And if you like what you've seen, then hopefully you can pick up a set of Series D. Um, we're going to do other live streams, so fear not, though, we will be back with more models and other bits and bobs. And uh, we'll see you guys on the next one. Look after yourselves and take care. Bye bye. Bye bye.